kill Trey, kill Pistons. Yes. Let me do Celtics too, just to. Right. I'll kill Trey and kill Pistons. If we deliver an hour, 90 minutes, that's good. Or an hour. Yeah. You said one hour? Mm hmm. Because they ain't already wasted, huh? Talking about flashing lights, baby. Flashing lights everywhere. Niggas are saying shit about me. They didn't even fucking know me. This is my school. This is what I was doing with what nobody looked. Y'all don't know what goes on in practice or the locker room. Welcome back to Gills Arena, presented by Underdog Fantasy. Whoa, whoa! <laughs> Special pre-taped edition <laughs> of the show. <laughs> be, like that, be like that sometime, <laughs> homie. You know they got it out for us. As soon as they seen that number seven on Complex, <laughs> got to improvise. They started plotting. Could have been Santa Claus. Could have been Kwanzaa Claus. <laughs> Who really knows? <laughs> But this is Gilsbury presented by Underdog Fantasy. As always, we got the legend Gilbert Arenas here with us. What it do? We got Rashad McCants in the building. Mm -hmm. Looking very festive. Festive. What's good? You good? I'm here to work. Okay, you ready to work? <laughs> I'm here to work. I'm here to work. <laughs> I'm here to work, baby. <laughs> uh, okay, and we got Kenya Mark back here with us. What's, What's up, Kenya Mark? Yeah. Feels like we did this before. But <laughs> nonetheless, here's what we got cooking in the arena today. Uh, Joel Embiid dropped his second 50-piece in December against one of the league's best defenses, but is he the most skilled center in the modern era? According to reports, the final three years of Zion's extension with the Pelicans are no longer guaranteed, which is confusing because I was led to believe a guarantee was a guarantee. But nonetheless, what does this mean for his future in New Orleans? And the Lakers have dropped four of their last five games, but did LeBron call out the coaching after their latest loss. Before we get into all that, as always, the show is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Download the app, use promo code GILD, that will match your first deposit up to $100. You heard that right, $100 deposit match. If you download Underdog Fantasy, use promo code GILD. And, as always, we do mostly fans at the end of every show. Drop a good question with your Underdog Fantasy username, and if we use it on the show, we will give you a $50 bonus. If you send us a video, and that video is in the 30 to 40 second range, I repeat, 30 to 40 seconds maximum, with your Underdog Fantasy username, we use it on the show, we will give you a $100 deposit match. And as always, if you can't watch the show with us on YouTube, we got audio versions available on Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast from. And this is our last show for a little bit. We're gonna still bless y'all with content throughout the holiday season, but we will be back December 31st for a very special New Year's Eve spectacular. Whole crew will be here to reflect on the craziest moments of 2023 and count you down to 2024. We're going live at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific, taking you through midnight Eastern. It's a party at Gil's house, so pull up and celebrate the new year with us. You ain't got shit else to do, so you might as well come celebrate it with us. Mm. All right, let's get into it. So we got to talk about Zion. Uh, you know, report dropped today. According to the Athletics, uh, Mike Verkanov, the five-year extension that Zion Williams signed with the Pelicans last summer is no longer guaranteed. By missing 22-plus <clears throat> games last year, Williamson triggered a clause that turned the salary he's owed for the final three years of his deal, starting with the 2025-2026 season, from guaranteed to not guaranteed. The Pelicans can waive him after the 2024-2025 season, with no financial ramifications. But the, the contract also has ways for Williamson to earn back the guarantees by playing in enough games and hitting specific weigh-in checkpoints. So I'll break those down to you. 20% of his salary for the 2025-2026 season will become guaranteed if he passes all six of his weigh-in checkpoints during that season. Another 40% if he plays at least 41 games in 2024-2025. An additional 20% if he plays at least 51 and the final 20% gets re-guaranteed if he plays at least 61 games. He can re-guarantee portions of his salary for the 26, 27, and 27, 28 seasons as well by hitting those same milestones in the previous seasons. 
So as we've already talked about, Zion's only played 114 of a possible 317 games in the previous three seasons. He missed all of 2021-22, more than 40 games last year with the pulled hamstring. And this season, Zion has only missed five of the Pelicans' 28 games so far, but is averaging career low in points and rebounds. So, Gil, start with you. What are your thoughts on this Zion situation and his contract with the Pelicans becoming non-guaranteed? I know one thing for sure. I know who didn't do this deal. That's Rich Paul. Because <laughs> there ain't no way in hell that they would have had all these clauses in the contract like that. Especially in today's game. That, that wasn't even in our time where you can have this much, these, men, these many penalties in one person's contract. So this is, this is really crazy. The only clause we rock with is Santa. Rashad, what you think? It's tough. It's a lot. Too much to even deal with. I don't just stop paying attention after you got <laughs> a certain level. I'm like, oh, this is, this is it's too much fucking shit. To... I felt bad reading this. Shit. <laughs> I know. I'm like, God damn, that's a lot. It's tough on them already, so it's just going to get a little bit worse, man. That's just tough for I don't know, man. I don't have too much to say on that take. That shit is just hurt my head just thinking about it. <laughs> Can you, how you feel about uh, Zion's contract situation with the Pelicans? Well, they feel the need to hold him accountable. Mm -hmm. So, and if you have to weigh in and all this to get your money and meet certain weight requirements to play a certain amount of games, then they know something we don't. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to force him to play in ways that you can't put into words. So they put it to in, in monetary, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So we all respect that. Yeah, money talks. Money talks, man. So we, we are watching a situation where it's, we're going to see what he do. How, how much he support, how, how much he loves the game, that he claims the, and, and for a team to, yeah, I, I've never heard of th those kind of clauses, mm -hmm. that many, but all of the clauses have to do with just play. Um, but, but, but the weigh-in thing, I think, is a real thing for him. So, yo, we'll see how much he care about the game mm -hmm. and his money. Yeah. So, so in order to, Start with the game, but if not, then you it will have ramifications on your account. So, mm. and, and that's that's the sad that's the sad part. That I mean, now now is that extra pizza, burger, <laughs> late night snacks worth millions? Yeah, Mi hundred million, fifty million. No, and it's not. And you know, if you're not telling yourself it's not, then um, then you can find yourself in a whole lot of trouble because moving forward, no matter what deal you do, they're gonna they're gonna put these clauses inside those contracts. And I I heard that he I don't know if it was true or it ended up happening, but in his shoe contract they had weight clauses. In his shoe contract they had um, private chef too. That's crazy. It had private chef and private trainer. Is that because he busted out them shits the first time? No, do I, I don't know. In college? Yeah. Like, no, no, no. I'm just saying in this in the shoe deal yeah. with, uh, J with, with Jordan that they gave him a chef, lifetime chef, and a lifetime trainer. So I don't even know if that's a true thing, but I know that was part of the Yeah, but the you got to do what... Is, and then he can have all those things could exist. Like, you can have the chef, but what is the chef cooking for? Mm-hmm. I would hope not some bullshit. No, but he but live in New Orleans, though. So yeah. he could be a chef. Okay, New Orleans somebody, somebody got a local chef from New Orleans. Like, yeah. yeah. But get cooking the bullshit. He, he cooking at New Orleans. <laughs> that that <laughs> shit scrumptious. He mm -hmm. fucking yeah. charboard horses and shit, all that butter and you all that shit. You can see it in his skin, well, though. You can see it in his like, skin tone. He eating New Orleans food. They, you but, yeah. see it. Yeah, nah, yeah, but it's, it's so definitely, like, you have to monitor that. If, like, if you want to get him a chef, then you need to get him someone who actually is going to cook the shit that he needs to be eating. And and not letting him say, well, I'm not. I don't like that. Mm -hmm. like, I don't you eat no, that. Yeah, you ain't got no choice. Yeah, yeah. like in this matter, you it's don't. At this point, at it's this millions point, now. We can't babysit the nigga no more, though. Oh no, we don't need to. That yeah. them, them millions, that contract. Oh no, that is, contract is baby is, oh. is enough. Yeah, we yeah. should stop talking about it because it's like at some point he gotta do what he do. Yeah. I mean, the weight thing is one thing. It's like go out there and just perform. Do what Ja did. Ja came out and he said, "Fuck what y'all thinking. I'm him." Yeah, at some point he gonna have to do that. He had to turn turn the ball over and say, "Look, man, it's my turn now. I'm gonna get this shit right." Because if we gotta keep talking about this weight shit, it's just crazy. Hey, wait, wait. You said last year, so that means this whole summer he was going through this. 
Yep. That means he already knew that this yeah, the last three years wasn't guaranteed. And look, we, we saw Zion at Summer League. He was gracious enough to bless us with his time, come pull up to the show, and said as much. And I think, Gil, you were very candid and open with him just about the struggles and difficulties that even you had as a young player in the league. Mm-hmm. Zion, only 23 years old. He's a man now. He's over 21. He's been in the league long enough. Now five seasons, obviously missed one with injury, but to have to do all these things, it's just now a willpower issue, right? And, and he said he had no problem summertime doing band work, getting his body right, always coming into the season. But you guys all know how difficult is that now once that season starts? Because inevitably you're going to put on weight, you're doing a lot of traveling, you're in hotels, mm-hmm. you got 24-hour room service menus that you can hit all the time. But the team knows this, right? The, the, there are things in place that if you want to monitor this, for the most part, for you can't. Part. Mm-hmm. Right? If it's a thing, you worry about him eating. So, so when I was with the Nets, um, we had a teammate that had a problem drinking. Mm-hmm. So, you know, in, a, in all the hotels we stay in, they have mini bar. Mm-hmm. But in his room, he never had one. They, all, they told him, the hotel beforehand, mm-hmm. don't put a mini bar in his room. He's not allowed to order drinks from the bar. He's not to be at the bar. He's, so they told this uh, like ahead of time. Mm-hmm. Being preemptive, like mm-hmm. trying to avoid. So you can tell, like that's what like, you hotel, you, so y'all know what it is. Mm-hmm. If you order certain things, those things not available for such and such guests. If it's room service. Yeah. Put a fucking security guard on this floor. <laughs> Dude, like I'm just like you. If you if you worried about it that much, the way it's it's becoming this sort of a problem, then you got to help him out. Yeah. So th- you 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 invested a lot of money so far. The rest of it not guaranteed. It's the new NBA. What if he's not of babysitting help, though? That's it ain't about taking it. He got to receive it. Uh, it's about no. It's about forcing it. It's your investment. Can't force feed a motherfucker. No, I'm giving him my money. So you That's can the thing. I'm, if I'm giving you, if measures. I sign if my money, I'm going to protect, I'm going to spend an extra million dollars to protect my money. Same thing I was saying with Ja. I'm going to spend an extra million dollars. I got, I got your security. But you said to me. I have your security. I gave you, I'm willing to give you $200 million. What's going to cost me an extra million for security? But or for them when to. You had that, when you had that chef, mm-hmm. when that chef leave. I'm ordering whatever the fuck but, I want. But in the hotel, I, I can put a security by his door. There's no food coming in this motherfucker. Yeah. The work coming in. There ain't no nothing. No, no, no. The work the coming thing. in. That ain't nothing. Uh, no. The work, bring uh, me some food. There Boom. ain't no... Hey, I bring have, me a hoagie. Bring I me have, some Chipotle have, in that bag. I have somebody by the door. You're, it's too there's much. nothing. It's too much. No, no it ain't. It's not for my investment. I'm not letting you fuck up my money. And this and, and this day and age, but in this day and age, right? Mm-hmm. And this, it's not like when we played. In this day and age, it's too many options as far as lodging, Airbnbs, other situations. They can have a chef on the road with him every for forty-one game road games and cooking his food. They, if if they want to, if they want to. That's all I'm saying. There's there's nothing. But I, 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 I'm I'm hundred percent with y'all. I'm just saying for him, if the food is nasty, he ain't gonna eat it. Then like, cool. if I want to eat egg, like, I eat egg, white, egg whites in the morning, mm-hmm. right? Eating plain egg whites is disgusting. I got to put ranch on my shit. Now, people say that's nasty, but that yeah. gives me a taste. It gives me something that I'm like, I could eat this shit Moderated. and it don't be nasty. Mm-hmm. I could eat it every morning and be like, I know I got to eat this shit to keep my shit. For him, it's like, man, I don't want that. I don't want that. Well, don't I get this. it. The chef's on the road. He, I don't want none of that shit. Okay, cool. But you don't want your money either. That's... That's why I told y'all, accept <laughs> this nigga for who he is and who he gonna be. Not, we can't put expectations on him. I mean, we can sit on this couch and say that those millions of dollars that he could potentially lose should be motivation enough. But we're having this conversation. Not if it's an yeah, but like I said, it, it starts off like with his love for the game, though. Yeah, hmm? yeah, yeah that too. Starts off with his love for the game. Absolutely. This is what tests his love for the game. Yep. Right? It starts off there. And him not meeting the game requirements last year kick this clause in, mm-hmm. right? So now moving forward, they have to play games with them. So one of the things is games played. If he's playing more games, then his weight probably may up his minutes. That'll help in that regard as well. Mm-hmm. So it's, 
Well, it's a domino effect. Too. It's it's a domino, domino effect. effect. The problem is it, it, it can go it can go south real bad because let's say he he does have knick knack and injuries. He's not he's gonna want to go and check into them games. Absolutely, because he don't want to he want to sit out no more. Yeah, I ain't gonna want to sit out. I'm, you know, hey, hey, hey sir. Ah, uh, but yeah, all that, yeah, yeah. Calf, uh, calf muscles. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't, shit, I ain't got like. I don't want him talking about me no how more. How many millions am I going to lose? That's not guaranteed. Then I got to, yeah, like once the contract's over with, now they got me at a fixed rate of, oh, we just signed you one year deal. Damn. But Gil, right. I want to talk about something that you, you brought up with the Josh situation and when he lost basically those 40 million by not being able to get that, that, that full max contract. Is it different when you don't see that money already? Now, if it's in your bank account, I'm taking that bread. Uh, it's a different feeling versus I never had that bread to begin with. As we talked about yeah. that. Oh, yeah, this is two different situations. Yeah. One is it's not accounted for yet. Okay. Right? It's, oh, I, I'm, you know, all NBA team, oh, boom, 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 cool. I could. This one, it's, I already signed this, so this was accounted for. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's out. This money's accounted they took, for. They this took is, that shit okay. out, man. Yeah, this, they, they taking it back. Yeah. Like, we gave you five years, now it's two. Oh, mm. shit. Oh, two. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> yeah. And it's, I mean, so, I mean, what does just say, even, even presenting this contract off top, if you're Zion, how you feel, you, you got to feel a certain way about it, even signing that deal with all these parameters and clauses in place and basically saying, here's a guaranteed contract, but none of this shit is actually guaranteed. Some of it actually... No, it's, it's all guaranteed if you do what you're supposed exactly. to do. Mm-hmm. So there's, no, they, they are protecting their investment. So they're protecting themselves in this. People forget. It's a business of basketball, man. <laughs> like, it's a business. Mm-hmm. That's what it, like, so therefore, they got millions and millions of dollars invested in this product. How desperate did they, did the problem, how desperate did the agent have to be to even present this to the player? Did he present it to the player? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Shit. Hell yeah. As I said, this ain't no rich because look you, like he, because this is a rich like Paul, Zion has that no, pressure on him. No, but because if like he, he did because if he didn't present it to him, then the agent has in trouble and his contract is null and void because mm-hmm. the player didn't, he didn't know. So they're so, so trust we gotta, we gotta, we gotta <laughs> Why know. Why he not playing like he got that fired? When? Because at the, the, be, the beginning of the season, it was already on. Uh, we're just finding out. Yeah. The beginning of the season, it was the, last year it kicked in. So that means all this work, all this this summer, right? that's all been on his head. But that's what I'm saying. Because he missed 40 he games looked, last year. You're saying that he looked a little bit bigger when he came, when he came back, but he was playing well, but it's like, it don't look like he put that, a lot of effort into the losing of the weight nah, he compared looked, to him having to. No. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you have to, I'm thinking you're going to come in, like, two, 250. I think he lo- like he looked thinner going into training camp. Right. He, he looks a little puffier now. Yeah, that's what I was saying, too. Right, you know. Um, so it would, it, I would think that if he was having that conversation with his agent, his energy in the whole... But what, uh, what yeah, but we saying? can't... I mean, we, you know, we, agent, whatever aside, like, this is on Zion. Like, Kenny, you said, this is about your love, dedication to the game. Whatever, you know, I'm sure all the parameters are outlined to him. He signed the deal, like, you know, with his own free will. Now it's like, all right, what are you going to do from this point forward? And we've gotten to talk to him. He's a good dude. You, you can tell he's got a good heart. But... Yeah, this applies across the board, though, not just to Zion. To, so they're like, oh, yeah. oh yeah, this is going. Uh, like, like what, what happened here is going to happen a lot. Yeah, this applies mm-hmm. across the board for guys, man. If if people have to force you to eat right, work out, do this, do that, then they're going to start putting it in your contract. Yeah, you you got to come in the training camp at this weight. You have to be able to run this and that. They're going to start putting a little tedious shit in these contracts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I better start reading this fine print. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but we always seen it. Whenever we see these deals where it's like hundred, it's a two hundred million dollar deal, hundred and fifty of it's guaranteed, and the other fifty is in these incentives. That's what these incentives be. It be these weird little things inside. But that's the difference between pro pros and just being an NBA player, mm. right? When when that season starts. The NBA, the, the, them superstars don't use that time to be a, a NBA player. Like, in the summer, you know, in the summer, NBA players aren't bad. 
because their family's there the whole time, right? So they got to practice. Gotta, they're not traveling to different cities, you know, seeing their girls and stuff. That happens. All that drinking and stuff happens when the actual season starts, which is the bad part. So you, you'll get someone who's 4%, 6% body fat during the summer, and he catches that weight during the season because he's away from home now. Yeah, we're going to Miami, LA. Yeah, in the summer he got <laughs> he got to check in. <laughs> he got to check in. There ain't no Roy. He can't run. He can't tell. Hey, babe, I'll be back. I'm about to go to Miami for a week. Nah, we going to Miami. We going. <laughs> we going. It's a family trip. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, they're coming in to use training camp to get in shape. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> they do it all the time. Yeah. So let, let's talk that about shit. That. Hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about this contract a li little bit. Is this contract good for both sides if a trade was to happen down the road? No. Because the contract still exists. The wording in it is in it. Like, they know mm -hmm. who's going to tear it up. But what I'm saying is if I'm the Pelicans, I want to make a move now. Does this, does this make it appealing to other teams? Yes. Hell yeah. But then again, it's not like what Gil was saying about the other trades when you're trying to, like, James Harden, don't make it look like it's broke, don't make it look like it's yeah. not usable. Yeah, it's the best thing ever. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I think I, I don't think they've tarnished the product <clears throat> where they can't sell it. Actually, just make the product even uh, more valuable. Because if, you, if you're Pat Riley... You know, you, you're not going to have that problem with him. <laughs> right away. <laughs> you're right not going to have that problem. Right so, away. to be honest, I'm pretty sure you're, you're hoping it fails so they can void that contract so you can sign him. But you get rid of him for Bam? No. No, I can, no, no, no. No, because he ain't going to be no... He get over there, Pat Riley making that man a three. Pat Riley ain't playing all that. <laughs> Pat Riley gonna make him a three, a real small forward. Have Jimmy at the two? He gonna have keep a real. Bam. You keep yeah, him. keep get, no, get Bam at the four. four. Give me a five, you, man. You need, need a five. five. You think Bam a four? I, I said yesterday, Bam is. I've been saying, yeah. it, man, and that's a, why I don't think he's been four, effective. Dog. He's a, that's why his numbers are what they are. <laughs> yes, I said it's, it's, I don't like he's him a at four, the four, man. I don't like he him at the five. He needs somebody next to him. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's yeah. That would have been like me playing the five. My whole like, mm -hmm. Real dude, fast. undersized. Like, uh, <laughs> I'm aggressive and athletic as they come. Bam, <laughs> jump high and athletic as they. It's a big difference, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you're able to move and run freely, and you ain't got to worry about. Mm hmm Come on, man. Like, like it ain't a lot. Mark, like you and Marcus Camby out yeah, there running around. Yeah, me, hey. Mark, me, Nay, Nay, me. Hey, yeah. Yeah. One next to me. Yeah, yeah, one next to me. One next to me. Yeah, I ain't, gonna, I ain't the one, I ain't too proud to say it. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, big fella, that's you. <laughs> yeah, that's you. Yeah, yeah. 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 So you got them. <laughs> you got I got yeah. you back. Yeah, I, I got, got you back. I got you back. Send this way. You know I'm here. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, nah, but other than that, no, nah, he, he, that's what they need, man, and I, and I agree with you. I think Pat Riley will make him a three. So we'll monitor the situation, see how it plays out, but uh, let's talk about another crew dealing with some struggles. Uh, Lakers are riding high after winning the NBA Cup, but have been a hot pack of mid ever since. Uh, they were the healthiest, <laughs> healthiest they've been all season, heading to their meeting with the Zach levine Bulls on Wednesday night, and left with an embarrassing loss that even had Magic Johnson trying to tweet through it. Magic said defense did not show up tonight in the 124-108 Lakers loss to the Chicago Bulls without Zach Levine. He spelled Levine's name wrong, but we'll give it to you, Magic. You're a billionaire. This is definitely a bad loss for my Lakers. Uh, very well said. Purple and Gold have dropped four of their last five games, including three straight, and now they're holding down the A seed in the West. So after the game, LeBron James has some interesting comments about the team's rotation choices. I mean, that's not my call. Obviously, I understand that you know, it's very difficult you know, as far as when guys are in and out and our rosters have not been whole all year, whatever the case may be. And, um, you know, Vando is working through, you know, you know his situation. And, um, you know, Rui has been up and down as far as his minutes. Um, you know, and obviously Gabe just come back tonight for the first time and he's on a minutes restriction. So uh, we're just trying to find what works for us. Uh, what works well for us as far as lineups and things of that nature. We had a lineup out there tonight, obviously, that we haven't played with all season. And Chicago was make a run, was able to make a run when that lineup was out on the floor. So it's something we got to work through. I think it's um, you know, trial and error, and it's going to happen on the fly because we don't have much practice on. So we, we had a lineup out there that we haven't used all season, and Chicago was able to make a run. We can get to the, to the basketball shit in a second. Like, can't let, like... 
Can't let the man put God it. damn. <laughs> hey, let her moisturize. Like, hey, man, can we... Can, we used to say, I used to hate but that. Man, Dude. let your man put hey, clothes up on, on me. I was like, you got to fucking wait. Wait bro. a minute, man. <laughs> LeBron like, multitask. Get, yes. No, that shit is annoying. Oh, yeah, that shit I know. Weak, sure. bro. Like, they, attack, they attack you. As soon as you to, sit down, too. He's like, trying to get out of there. See, the thing is... See, people don't put in the cousin. He's trying to get out of there as fast as he can, so he like, fuck it, let me just go ahead and do this shit right <laughs> now. Like, but, dude, they, they shit, I'm like, yo, let me let him get dressed first, and then... Yeah. He out of there as soon as he dressed. As soon as he dressed, he leaves. He out of there. We gotta get him now. They know we gotta get him now. Man, this nigga just... Geez. I don't like all, all right. that, man. But, 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 but knowing LeBron, he's probably the last one yes. doing it because he's gonna stretch down, do all that shit first, so... They probably it was waiting it. on them. I know they he probably was, was yeah, they probably was in there motherfucking 40 minutes. I'm yeah. with it. Yeah, we gonna wait but at least put, let me put my shirt on first. Yeah, at least. Yeah. But all the shit he said, not rolling with none of that shit, man. <laughs> Y'all just won. Of course not. Y'all just won. What the fuck? Okay, Y'all just celebrated. Honest. You just did the champagne shit. Ain't nothing to be fixed. Ain't no rotations to change. What the fuck are y'all talking about? You just, Overcame the odds. Stop all that, bro. Y'all supposed to be on a winning streak right now. It's supposed to be a winning streak, bro. You're supposed to be riding high. You're supposed to be like Philly. You're supposed to be looking like Philly. You're supposed to be looking like the, uh, Boston at home. What is the streaks? It's a shit streak. That's what the fuck it is. <laughs> it's a fucking shit streak. This shit is nasty out there. I don't like it. And I ain't even a Laker fan, so I know how y'all niggas feel. You know, I've given up hope in all facets of life a long time ago, so. Matt yeah, Johnson saying shit. Hey, the, 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 this, is, this, this is the one thing I do take it from, from it when Magic Johnson said, what was the defense tonight? Ham should really look at his lineup. Because the fact that you have four defensive players out there and you can't stop nobody, go offense. <laughs> On the Chicago Bulls. I, if I keep telling you as an offensive player, I'm telling you as an offensive player, your defensive lineups are some bullshit. Take my word for it. <laughs> as an offensive player... I get to run at your defense all game, and guess what? I get the fucking rest Yes. on defense. That's crazy. I don't have to guard Prince or Cam. I can sit here and do this all fucking day, and then when I get the ball, you got to stop me. That means I'm playing one-sided basketball. <laughs> so the fact that you got three guys out there who don't shoot the ball, that means Caruso gets to be aggressive. Yeah. He was cooking. He gets to be aggressive because he's more aggressive than the guy. He's the defensive player that's a little bit more aggressive than your defensive players. It's dumb thinking, right? <laughs> it's dumb thinking. I get to shoot the ball t 25 times. Why the guy I'm guarding gets to shoot four or five? Make it rain. And you, you think that's something? I'm averaging 29. If you do a good job, you hold me to 20. I don't have to do nothing. You're gonna you're gonna limit yourself to fucking six. That's still fucking 14 point advantage on you. Shoot to Jay. It's J. horrible thinking. Stop it. <laughs> Shoot to Jay. So I don't I don't listen. I know you come from Michigan. I know you've been on these all defensive teams back in the early 2000s. That shit's been over. <laughs> I, I used to love playing against Royal Ivy, dudes like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh goodness. Great. Dudes like, oh, I used to love that shit. Defensive guy. Day off. Woo! Oh. Can you just say the player game? No, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. But I gotta, gotta let you know. Yeah, because you, you gotta, gotta go let you know. It. Like, then, then don't say his defense was great or bad. He was not gonna shoot offensively, which means I don't have to do nothing. Now, if I had to guard someone like Steph. Back and forth. Yeah. Different. No matter if he playing, he, he, like he can't play defense. Shit, I can't either. Shit, that's an even match. Yeah. He's going for thirty. I'm going for thirty. My hardest matchup was Steve Nash. For the, if you look at our numbers, I'm scoring fifty. He's scoring forty. Right, he's covering the difference. So even though I have fifty four, it's only a ten point match because he got forty four. <laughs> Now, if that was just a, if that was just Rajah Bell by himself and Rajah gonna put oh, in yeah. 15, oh, yeah. oh, game over. Game over. <laughs> but you got yeah. Steve Nash matching my production. And, and people don't understand. You can't have Cam and Prince and D'Lo D'Lo out there not doing nothing. Vando. Vando, like you got four guys who who ain't who ain't 
putting fucking 30 points together. Like, your backcourt has to, like, this is how you're supposed to be playing the game. Your backcourt should be averaging at least 40 to 45 points. So you got rid of Pat Bev, Russell cool. Westbrook. Cool. And somebody else. Uh, another defensive player. Three defensive players, would you consider? Not, not yeah, you got rid of three. You got rid and of, you brought in three more three, defensive yeah. guys? Yeah, like I, my, guard, my, guard, my guards together should be 40, 40, 40 to 45, 10, 11 assists, 10 rebounds for my front, my back court. Then my front court, they should be putting in about 50-some points, 17 rebounds, eight assists combined. Right. That's how you, you're supposed to have anywhere from 80 to 85, 81 to probably about 95 points from your starting unit. If you sitting in the 80s, the 65, oh man, y'all some trash. So you talking about D'Lo, Austin? No, D Austin's off the bench averaging 20. Well, I'm saying if he was in the starting lineup, it would change things, right? And then you got LeBron and AD, that's four players. No, but I mean, D'Lo's averaging what, 9, 11? So, yeah, we're, yeah we'll talk, let's talk about D'Lo right now, actually. Uh, and then we'll get to Darvin. So he was cooking early in the season, mm -hmm. before, 17, 18 a game. Before the, um, but before the end season tournament. But yep. struggled in December. He's averaging basically nine points, five assists, two rebounds in 27 minutes a game, shooting about 40% from the field, 30% from three. Last night against the Bulls, 28 minutes, one for six from the field, mm -hmm. 0 for four from three. Yeah, two for two, two points. This appears like that. I don't get it. Hey, he said he wanted to play like play like green now. Is that the green? But what's his name over there? White, white, green, right. but color, <laughs> blue, yellow. Play like that color. high yellow bald head dude with the beard. He, hey, you want you? Hey, he said he wanted to play. Be him now. <laughs> Derek White. Derek be White. Derek no, White Derek now, white please, ball. baby. Please be him right now. Cause that man balling his ass off. He's balling. balling like a mug. I watched that nigga last night. He really balling. But what, I mean, as you look at it, get. What is the issue? What's changed? What you mean? Is it the trade rumors? Like, what, I'm just saying, what's... Nothing, man, dog. So he man. feel like I feel. <laughs> he feel like I Nothing feel. has changed. He has been who he has been. Yes. <laughs> like, talented, yes. Solid. Damn. I was solid, Gil. Man, I was solid. No, 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 no. Bring him off the bench. You had hope for him. Listen, bring him off the bench. See what you're getting from him. If he ain't getting nothing, come sit down next to me. Man. That is him yeah. in a nutshell. 100%. Okay. I hate to be that way, but that's some guys in the league, You, that's what... Yep. It's like fucking football. I'm going to give you a couple touches at running back, and if you don't get the... All right, you know what? Shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, yeah. Right. yeah. Straight Shit. up. You Just know like that. You, camp... Uh, is it Cam Newton? Cam Newton said it about quarterbacks, right? Some guys are, was it uh, management? Game, yeah, management. game management. Game management. And, yeah. um, needle. And some guys are game changers. Game guys, yeah. He's a, he's a management guy. So He used to be a game changer. Yeah. Right? A dude who went in there and tried shit and really pushed the... Right now, he just, it seems like he's just happy to be out there or just out there trying not to make a mistake. He in L.A. As an NBA player, I don't need you out there trying not to make a mistake, right? You, you taking six shots, like, I, for you to even be on the court to be effective, right? To be effective in today's NBA, when you got all these guards trying to score 30, scoring 30 points a game, I don't need you shooting less than 15 shots. I'm sorry. If you can't, if you can't put up 15 shots, you do not belong on my court. When I got DeAndre, I got De'Aaron Fox and players like that coming at, no. You are not worth it at that point. Yes. Austin, come on. You averaging 20 off the bench, try to make it 30. I got to keep up position by position. If you can't keep up with your position, get the fuck off my court. Real shit. So Austin Reeves, uh, like you mentioned, 14 shots. He was 9 for 14, dropped 21 points. Cam Reddish, 14 shots. Okay. 5 for 14. Torian Prince, 10 shots. So I'm just saying, you got D'Lo at 6. He's still, hey, 10 shots. What, what position he playing? Who, D'Lo? Yeah, no, no, no. Prince. Uh, power forward, small forward, just depending. Hey, them, they, hey, them, 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 them boys are shooting about 17 now. <laughs> Them boys shooting about 17 now, right? It's position by position. <laughs> when you go into that game and you got to line up, right, you got to win your position. Yeah. 
or neutralize it as much as possible if you outmatched. That's it. That, that's, it's, when you crunching numbers, when you doing all your analytics and shit like that, analytic this, are you winning your position every night or close to? But this is what I said. When we talk about the Lakers, I'm always like, man, when you look at AD, you look at LeBron, and then you're like, where's the third piece? And if it ain't at the point guard position, you're looking at all the other point guards that lead their team throughout the league. They're all on good teams, and they're all playing good. Where's the Lakers point guard that has that same criteria? D'Lo started. I was hoping that he wasn't because you was high on him. I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah was I'm, like, I'm like, okay, because he, he was doing it. I'm like, this nigga, this, if he play like that, they got a chance. But then I'm like, nah, longevity going to hit him. Nine and five going to be him. That's him. That's who he is. No, you could have got more out of little Scotty than you did to Gabe Vincent. Uh, Scotty, I swear to Scotty you, Pippen? I swear to you. Hell yeah. That, see, that's I a... I swear to you. It, Proven basketball player, younger, hungry, yeah. aggressive, know how to play, would have got more out of him. And that's what I... Little that, Scotty can average nine and five. He can average Real nine shit. and five. Yeah. And, and he's a better defender. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Th this is my thing. Like, I guess all most of these coaches are coming from these defensive backgrounds mm -hmm. and the offense. Like, if you have, if you're coming from a defensive background, w what is your staff like? Because if your staff is the same way, you then you deserve to lose. Yeah. Right, you deserve to lose. Like someone had, like if you have a defensive back, that means your structure is defense. Then you need offensive minds on it to help you understand. To help you understand. That's why I said I can look at some of these lineups and say, you got too, you got too many of one piece. So right? you got four defensive players on the court, but they can't stop nobody. It's not that they can't stop nobody; they can't keep up scoring either. <laughs> you got in the in this NBA, you score what a hundred what. Four? Four? So you do that, you get smacked. The fuck is this? Too early, two thousand one. Let me ask you this: Is Darvin creating his schemes for the teams that he's playing? Is he not? You remember how we would say, like, if we we're playing against San Antonio, they're not changing. They sit. They're not changing no scheme for who they're playing against. They run in their system, mm -hmm. right? So is Darvin changing his scheme every game to meet whoever they're playing against? They don't have no system. I don't know, but I can I, I can't tell you that I'm not in the locker room, but I can tell you he don't sound like this. Hey y'all, we playing against the Phoenix Suns today. They trying to run you out of the building. Keep up. <laughs> keep up. But is he changing they, they the, ain't no, like, we ain't, in the they, lineup? We ain't no no, there ain't no change in lineup. Hey, keep up. That's all I can tell you, because. Steve Nash, you score, he coming back at you. For you, to, you got to keep up. This is horse for horse. When we play team, this is horse for horse. That's the only way. If you think you're going to try to stop them defensively, then you might as well not even walk out there. Did y'all ever change y'all lineup? Like, if y'all was playing um, <laughs> San Antonio one game and you're playing Gilbert the next, like, y'all not, oh, we're playing Gilbert tonight, we're going to change all... It's like, we do what we do, and we're going to get it done. That's a dumbass coach that's trying to sub people in and out. That's just, for, just for the... No. That's what I'm saying. Darvin is doing... Darv, it feels like he's doing that. Because he don't have no set rotation. That's what that's called. is That's called players not, not holding their own weight. That's called players not holding their own weight. Right? It's... It's... it's you playing against Chicago, you playing against um, Indiana, right? You, you, when you playing, you, what you're doing is you're changing the game plan, right? If your game plan is we're going to walk it, beat them down a little bit, boom, 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 and then we playing against a high-octane team, you got to be able to understand that, all right, today, hey, we're going to we're gonna have to get out in the open. Yeah. Right, and that's just the thing. Oh, they shoot a lot of threes. We're gonna beat them, beat them up down. Right, there's just these things that it comes with your game plan of switching. There's no way you can have four defensive players and you can't stop nobody. Because mm. if you, you know what I mean, you, <laughs> you got four. Like there's four guys on that. You got uh, AD supposed to be the best defensive big man. LeBron is a defensive player. Prince plays defense. Cam plays defense. And who, who y'all playing against Caruso? You can't stop Caruso. You can't stop a team that have no Zach Levine. What y'all there doing? If you can't stop nobody, put all offensive guys out there then. Mm. Yeah. I guarantee they're going to do a better job because they're going to put pressure yep. on the Rosen and them because that's how they're going to get those fouls. Yep. 
So you I, heard LeBron's post game comments. Obviously, looked like he was, you know, talking about Darvin a little bit without talking about. <laughs> it him. was, wasn't he? I mean, at what point does Darvin Ham get put on the hot seat? Because it seems like now for for his, his season plus with the Lakers, this has been an issue. Rotation's been an issue. Lakers fans obviously very, very, very uh, insane as a fan base, but consistent. Like, uh, and, and they've you know been talking about this for a while now. I don't think ever really been sold on him as a head coach. He's one of the goats, right? Hmm? He did. He's he's a historical coach now, right? For Darvin. NBA Cup World Champion of the World? Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's the first. He's the first. He definitely is historical for it. He's the first. <laughs> I didn't turn that motherfucker on. Hey, 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 I ain't even click. I got electric. Oh, wow. Damn. <laughs> I ain't got time to let it click, 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 click. Nah, nah, he gonna hear that. I ain't fucking with Darvin, man. I ain't, I'm gonna leave him alone, man. I ain't, hey, his job safe. As long as he got that Debo bike, I'm good. Reality is reality, man. And, and and if you can't accept reality that your lineup is trash, right? <laughs> you know, um, you don't need that much defense if it's going to compromise your offense. Um, you need pieces out there to. You need pieces that can put the ball in the basket, which helps. LeBron James and Anthony Davis. It just does. Like, you know, you saying you need scoring off the bench, that's that's fantasy basketball. That's a that's fantasy. Right? Oh, I need someone to bring no, no. Also, if he if he can put in 20 points a game, then he needs to be starting. Yes. Period. He needs to be starting. Hey, period. if you don't have nobody to come off the bench to put the ball in the basket, motherfucker, don't sub. Man. You got timeouts for <laughs> you got timeouts for a reason. Man, uh, you, yeah, you, fall, you don't want to waste the time. I take your shoe off, tie, get a delay of game warning, whatever the fuck you need to do. Feels learn how to yeah, yeah, learn how to manage some shit. Oh, damn, it's like you you learn what I don't know what y'all learning from each other, but it, all y'all are dumb. <laughs> I'm sorry, these coaches. Like if you ask a coach, hey, why do you do this? You know. <laughs> Whoa. Man, shit, that's, that's what the coach that's what the coach I was under taught me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you learn the stuff from who you watch instead of understanding and breaking it down and putting the party on. Yeah, putting your own shit to it. It's fucking mim it's fucking mimic basketball. Yeah. The fact that this is how you know these coaches aren't that smart. One team. That had the number one, two, three point shooters, the best players in the world, MVP. They had three MVP title winners on their team. They had three of them trophies under one roof, right? They had a, a finals MVP under that roof. They had some championships under that roof. And the rest of the league decide we're going to mimic what they do. The other 29 teams didn't look in their locker room and say, hey, we don't have, <laughs> we, we don't have the, 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 the pedigree to do this shit we doing. Mm -hmm. Is one of y'all named Wardell? <laughs> Wardell. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, money, easy money sniper. Do we got an easy money sniper in here? Go on twice. Go on twice. <laughs> easy money sniper. Do we got Splash Brothers up in here? We don't have none of this, but we're going to do the same thing that they're doing hoping for the same results, that means the, the other general managers and the other coaches that decided to even try this shit should have been fired. As a coach, if I'm a coach and a general manager came to me and said, hey, you know, if this is what we're going to need to do, we're going to need to put up at least 33s. And I got to do one of these? We got some new players coming in there? <laughs> Because ain't no motherfucking way that this group can sh Listen, <laughs> I, I got shooters because shooting is just shooting the ball. I don't have no shot makers in this motherfucking group. So um, I'm, I'm telling. <laughs> I'm telling. I'm telling the owner, you done came up with this bullshit. <laughs> you supposed to be fired. Right? All of them. The, the fact that you came in here and this is what you told me. Shoot 33s with this fucking group. You, I'm telling on you. But it's just like music. Like, you see how music changed and everybody had to change with the music. 
Because if you started to go against it, you sound different than what everyone's listening to. Same with Golden State. Everyone started to see this is a successful brand of music that everyone's putting out. We all listen to the same shit. We all love it. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, you start seeing the other rappers start rapping like that guy who's most successful. And everybody's song starts sounding alike. Mm -hmm. Same with basketball. Every team think that they can do what Lil Yachty and y'all can't. Y'all not y'all don't got the pedigree, like you said. So the league has became what the Golden State Warriors created. No, they didn't become it. The league did. No, th no, they didn't. They tried to become it. The league they has become a three-point shooting league no, because that, of the Golden State. But that's what I'm saying. Like, it's, they tried, right? You, they didn't become. They tried to become. None of them succeeded. Oh, they're not going to succeed at becoming what Golden State but, is. But, that, but they took a, they took a, uh, a, a, like a project and said, look, let's try this. Not the champs. None of the champs did. Right. <laughs> uh huh. Bucks didn't. Nope. Because mm -mm. they didn't have a formula to. Yeah, but that's what they, to change the game. They get. That's what I'm saying. Like, it, Denver didn't. Mm -mm. Right. So. The, the teams that did. The teams that you sitting there putting your, your, your six nine. Power forward at center, you're putting a 6'5 dude that's husky with a 32-inch bounce, right? Uh, I think he plays in with Dallas. You got him at the four. Like, y'all should get y'all. Y'all should be fired. Ain't no motherfucking way I'm going to look at my team and be like, all right, go out there and play the four. Go, you go guard Jokic. Jokic sitting there like, <laughs> Thank you, coach. <laughs> I'm playing for the other team at this I'm point. I'm playing for the other team. I'm playing for the other team, man. Like this, 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 this gimmick basketball. Most of these coaches, you should they should do a psych test on these some bitches. <laughs> Where did you learn? And show me your playbook. <laughs> show me your playbook. Where'd you get it from? Do what he well, did. I, I got I'm it. doing what he did. Yeah, I got it from Golden State Warriors. Yeah, I'm doing what he did. I'm doing what I got it from did. Golden State Warriors. Okay. Shit, even the Golden State Warriors assistant coaches don't run the Golden State Warriors. Yeah. <laughs> it ain't got the personnel. Right. Mike Brown, well, Mike Brown don't run the same thing that Steve Kerr did. Nope. He runs his own shit. Real shit. He runs his own fucking, he'll take a few plays here and that, but he runs his own plays. And he did in Cleveland, too. Yeah. So, speaking of Mike Brown, uh, Celtics played the Kings. Nice. Wednesday night. I try. It's the first. Wait, 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 happy belated. I mean, my man, my man, De'Aaron Fox had a birthday yesterday. Okay. Because he was. Yeah, yeah, no, he got it. Yeah, yeah. DeAndre, Darrington. Yeah, yeah. De'Aaron, De'Aaron Fox, one head had 27 at the half. Like, goddamn, boy. He was killing. <laughs> he getting them birthday licks in. <laughs> <laughs> he was balling. But uh, uh, Celtics have been unstoppable at the crib, 14 and 0 so far this season. But the road has been a different story. Uh, Seeds are currently 7 and 6 on the road. They just snapped their four-game road losing streak on the second night of a back-to-back against the Kings on Wednesday with Jason Tatum out with an ankle sprain. So how important was bouncing back with the win on the Kings without Tatum and ending that road losing streak? Rashad, we'll start with you since you're our resident Boston Celtics fan. Man. Lifelong. <laughs> In the green. <laughs> I liked it. I liked it a lot. I think that uh, um, Boston shows a lot of resilience. Um, when it comes to their rotations, their defensive energy, I like their ball movement. I love what Derek Wright, Derek White is bringing to the game, man. He, he's become, to me, like a candidate for most improved. Um, he's playing both sides of the ball. He's doing all the things that, you know, Marcus Smart used to help him with um, playing alongside Drew Holiday. Now they got two, you know, two strong guards that can do a lot of good things. And I, I like Jason, um, what he's doing in the intern, but Jalen Brown last night showed that, you know, he could step up. I like all that. So Celtics have five players go over 20 last night, uh, led by Derek White and Jalen Brown. They both had 28. Drew Holiday had 21. Porzingis, who didn't play against the Warriors, came back at a 24-piece, and Peyton Pritchard off the bench. Peyton played Dropped great. 20. Peyton played great. They took 58 threes against the Warriors, I think 17 for 58. 42 threes against the Kings, 22 for 42, shot 52% from three. Yeah. I think mean, didn't both teams shoot well? They yeah. did. Keegan I mean, and, uh, at, at, at early. Keegan and Pritchard was going back yeah. and forth. I, I, Kings I, shot like 48% from behind arc, 21 to 44. I, I, I see what's going to be um, <clears throat> as, as great as Drew Holiday 
what's supposed to be for them and really important, I can see the last five minutes they, they have them on the bench sometimes. Because the way White's been playing, um, and you can see they've been testing that lineup, and that lineup has been amazing. Mm -hmm. Where they have White at the point, um, they got Tatum or Brown at the two, and they go real big. That line, they've been punishing. With, with Porzingis and, and, and Horford in? Yeah. yeah. Or, or I don't other know who, kid. or the other big kid. Yeah. I mean, he, he, big kid when they play, they got the headband on, I forget his name. Black dude. Uh, uh, we know. need a pronunciation guide on Yeah, yeah. Just, just what country is he from? Quita, whatever. Yeah, he been affected. He been, he been affected. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that's the because, is, Yeah, I don't know. I don't, yeah, because uh, so Tatum, Tatum or uh, Brown usually have Curry. That's that's how that looks, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. He's sitting there posting those guys up, and that's what's gonna help them in the playoffs. I like that. Namias Keita. Okay. Okay. Good job. Namias Keita. <laughs> you say Good so. Yeah. You say Namias so. Kata. We got it the first time. Can you use it in the sense? <laughs> I'm just, Gil, because might have to say Oh, you're just trying to remember it. Okay, okay. That's, that's can you use it in the sense? Mm -hmm. Country of origin. Uh, you you okay. got to use your vowels, uh, man. You got to use your vowels. You had to pull up the pronunciation guy. God bless the NBA. Google's your friend, but. <laughs> but let's talk about a little bit just about uh, Celtics on the road. Obviously, phenomenal at home. Haven't lost a game. Seven and six on the road. Can you, how concerning are the Celtics' road struggles at this point? Above 500. That's all that matters. <laughs> oh, shit. Listen, I'm being real. You can ask for really. No, because you ain't said no, but, but that team, as constructed, you would expect them to, the road record to get better as the season goes on. Um, yeah, I don't think they should be teetering around 500, not with the talent that they have, but they are above 500 right now. You got to give them some props for that, but. To be as dominant as you are at home and to be playing mediocre basketball on the road. Um, yeah, you got to look in the mirror and figure out um, things that we need to do as a unit to rectify. And I think it's, it's small things on the road. It's not turning the ball over. It's getting quality shots every possession. It's making sure that this defense travels. This defense that we play at home making sure that this travels. And yeah, but I think it's, it's enough time in the season for them to rectify it. But yeah, they, they have too much talent. But, but being, by, being above 500 in December on the road, you, you take it. I think uh, sometimes <clears throat> coaches coach too much on the road, right? When you're at home, you have a lot of freedom. Right, it's it's you know the coach is being judged by the crowd, right? So you that usually the coach is a little looser, right? If you look back when Golden State was really popping, they tried to shoot you out of the building when they went on the road. They tried to outshoot you in your home building, right? And sometimes, like I remember uh, with our Princeton offense, our half when we went into the half, we were scoring about 40, 45, right? And then in that second half, we scored probably about 110, right? And we had to really figure out what we were doing, and we was calling so many plays at the beginning, slowing down what we do. That might be, you know, uh, a, a thing with them that, you know, they try to go into there trying to control their shots when you might have to say, all right, Let's try to outscore them like we do at home. Let's try to outscore them in their building. Because they're going to be, the whole team is going to be more freer. They're going to throw the ball. They're going to try all this shit. Let's use that to our advantage. Mm. Yeah, like when them boys won 73. No, you got to play like that. Like, how they, like Gil's point, like they coming to your building trying to run you out of your <laughs> own place. Mm -hmm. And that's what that's the way Boston got to approach it. Like, there's no Tip, yeah, from jump. You got to get to it. But those Warriors, I mean, they'd be down 10, 15, 20. <laughs> Eat that, lead them, and it'd be like five, six minutes at game time, and they up five now. And it's just it's like three ball, man. Yeah. Austin leads the league in threes attempted, so it's like they shoot more threes than anybody in the league. So it's yeah. they can do it. They yeah. just gotta just implement it and, and stop calling like like they shot like last night in after the first quarter. I think the score was 41-39 after one. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I was on the phone with KJ. I would say, oh yeah, this is gonna be a whole lot of points scored. This yeah. bit somebody gonna <laughs> yeah. score one fifty. Yeah. Just how the first quarter was going, I'm like, oh, they three after three after three yeah, after three. Yeah, I'm like, they yeah. chunking this bitch. So I'll give you Boston all four quarters. First quarter, 38. Second quarter, they had 36. Third quarter, they had 39. 
fourth quarter they had 31, but they were already up like 20 going into that fourth quarter. So is that good? Yes, it was down two after that, one. Yeah, down, they were down yeah, three. So yeah, it was 41, 38. One. Yeah, Kings were up. Yeah, Kings up. Yeah, and then the Kings fun. went up. There's no defense in Boston. There's no more good defense, man. But that's what I'm saying. Like if if that if the offense is that powerful, where you're going down doing what you're saying, is it is it no defense or is it that you can't guard no shit like that? It's, it's just offense, right? We don't you don't have you don't have four dudes on there. <laughs> that's you don't have those Robuses no more, man. You don't have three Robuses on the court no more. Those yeah. guys can put that ball in the basket, and if you can't match it, then you're gonna get blown out of the building. So would you say defense? It's just as good as it used to be. Like we, we, early 2000s, we would see those low no. score games. No, that, no or is the offense just so much better? We used to scheme game plans defensively. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right? Now it's, I don't think people put as much into a defensive game plan because it's so wide open and there's so many threes being mm -hmm. shot that you really can't set a defense for as many threes as teams. You can't, you can't set a defense for somebody shooting 48 threes in a game, dog. Like, I mean, they shot, like, it's... You know, so funny, this, remind, this is more back into early 90s style when it was more ISO basketball, right? It was more ISO basketball then. That's the way the game is. It seemed like it reverted back to there because now we can't, we got to switch everything now it's, all they have to do is put in a rule where you got to touch your man, you got to be close like, you know, MJ had, and you're going to see a whole lot of people on that island. <laughs> you know, the fact that, you know, you can, because think of this all ISO basketball, but, you know, people at the nail now. Yeah. What, what if you couldn't be at that nail no more? You got to, uh, I got to sit right here. Hey, 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 you by, by yourself. yourself. By yourself. <laughs> <laughs> by yourself. Good luck. <laughs> by yourself, bro. <laughs> All right, you think, you think, think it being averaging 30, 33, 34 now? No help oh. on the nail. Woo-wee. No help, no on, help the on the nail. Shit, you're in trouble, boy. <laughs> yeah, that nail help me. Hey. <laughs> hey, man. That foot on. <laughs> put that foot get on. There, foot on. <laughs> I need to see that You better foot. dig a little bit. You better I need dig. To see the dig, bro. Quick, because he coming. Uh, he's, he's going this way, trust me. <laughs> I need that help at that nail, dog. So, Rashad, question for you, and then I want to uh, get the rest of the group's take on it. But Celtics starting lineup includes uh, first-team All-NBA selection in Tatum, second-teamer in Jalen Brown, first-team All-Defense in Drew Holiday, second-teamer in Derek White, who's now balling on the offensive side, and a unicorn in Chris Stapps, Porzingis. From top to bottom, do the Celtics have the best starting five in the league? <sighs> I want to say yeah, yeah, I want to say yeah. Um, they're playing the best right now. They also have the best record in the league right now, too, so we got to point that out. Just down the line, one through five. Sixers are close, though. I like the Sixers. Wow. I th I, didn't we answer this already and said Boston? That yeah. was 95 points a game as a starting five. So are you rolling with them now? Because you said that... A while ago, that you didn't like that starting five, you you maybe put Horford in. You didn't yeah, like, you didn't like Drew season. Holiday. I thought we answered that Tuesday, Wednesday, Tuesday. That mm -hmm. they have the, yeah. We answered it because I, I said they have they averaging ninety five points as a starting unit, and then second was Dallas. Yeah, yeah, you did. Right. I remember that. But from a point standpoint, I'm talking about from an overall offensive yeah. defensive. I mean, offensive defense, yeah, but I mean, shit, you scoring 95 points as a starting unit. Pretty Trust good. me, you the best. That's pretty good, yeah. <laughs> so you put them over the Nuggets crew. Hell yeah. That's what I was torn up. Yeah. I remember we said yeah. Murray wasn't yeah, Murray, not yeah, Murray. But I'm just saying full strength versus full strength. I'm going with the champs. Oh, full strength versus full strength? Me too. I'm yeah. going with the champs. I will go with Denver, too. I'm going with the but Boston can match them size wise. Yes, that, that's ba the yeah. See, it's it's skill, hard. Like skill, the the, the starting the lineup. Yeah, they like, can match them size wise. What does I mean, KCP? I mean, as long as you got KCP, you can go two guards because he ain't posting up. Yeah, but he's still shit. As long as they got Jalen, as long as they, when they put Jalen Brown at the four, it kind of really, because it's not like he's driving by the other four, mm -hmm. right? It's not like he has an advantage over Gordon. Or G Gordon gonna sit there and try to. Post his ass. Yeah. He's gonna, he gonna try to post his ass up too. Yes, mm -hmm. And then you and then they're gonna hit the switch and then his ass gonna be on goddamn Jokic. Right? So right, you know, um, you're gonna give Denver the edge on that. 
Now, if they, you know, switch that lineup. And That's got, what I was about to say. If they switch the lineup, then they're wide. To the one that you like. To yeah, the lineup yeah. that you like uh-huh. with the big. One with, guard, and I got my, I got Tatum at the two. See, Al Horford, yeah. Al Horford and Porzingis yeah. or, or Porzingis so that, in the. That's going to be their best. That put, Michael, gonna be Porter, the, that put Michael Porter oh, uh, on Tatum. Hold on. I got to pull him back. Yeah, on Brown. The Mike's Tatum. Yep. And or vice versa. The Mike's White and Murray. If you're playing that lineup, you're... White on Murray. Yeah, White on Murray. Yeah, I'm putting Aaron Gordon on Tatum. And then um, now you have... But you still got Horford and what's the name? I'm and letting then... Michael Porter guard Al Horford. Yeah. Mm. I like... Michael Porter, yeah, yeah. I like that. No, people don't realize Michael Porter Jr. is 6'10". I mean, uh, Michael Porter is 6'10". He, he, he can do it. <laughs> no, but I'm saying he's 6'10". But, but, but of the people, I, I'm going to let... I, I want him... You want Aaron him. to guard him. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to put him over on... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Obviously, Nuggets been dealing with injury issues. Timberwolves are first in the West right now, but just looking at, again at that roster, that championship roster at full strength. Yeah. Let me ask you this, though. If if that happened, do you go to the post with Al? Hell no. Fuck no. Oh, on no. on uh, Michael no. Porter? Yeah, you can try, but Michael no. Porter can, he can challenge him. I'm not, going, I'm not rolling. Yeah. Not at this juncture. Well, Post defense with young Michael Al Porter Horford. against Al? A younger Al Horford? Yeah, the jump Season hook. Season Al, jump young, hook, young, jump hook. hook. Young yeah, jump hook Al Horford. Short step, long step? Yeah, but, but not, not this Al Michael Horford. Porter, he ain't got nothing for not that. Not this Al Horford. Lent. You're going to win You're right. You're right. Long you're right. Arm, I see, I see athleticism. Older, he's, yeah, older. He's more athletic than Al Horford he and younger. There. And he's, um, so I just... Just foul. I'm just thinking foul trouble. I mean, you're going to waste... Crafty shit. What I'm saying is you're going to waste 20 shots on Al Horford? <laughs> posting him up. Posting him up. No, no, no. I'm not giving him. Hey, I'm hey, not going to post him up. Just, just see what it look like down there. Can he guard it? He's going to get him in foul trouble. Yeah. Michael like Porter go, if he get one, he going to motherfucker play him like this for the fucking that's rest of the That's what I'm saying. If he you get him one. Then, but then, so, so, so to Gil's point, then that's taking the ball out of Jason right, Tatum's hand and Jalen Brown's yeah. hand. And it's taking the ball out of their hand. But you so remember you, how we used to do. Trend, but yeah, of course. In the first two minutes of the game, we go in the aisle, see if he. See I'm if with you it, can but, get it going. But they're not going to have it going. We're going to run our old ass around some screens. Michael Porter <laughs> <laughs> Pick shot. What? <laughs> I got you. Troy, yeah, that's exactly. That, because you got to guard somebody on the other end. You do. All right, well, let's keep this moving with a little hibachi time. Oh, I don't know. I thought that was. Oh, I thought we were going to talk with you. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> right, thing. I thought we were about to say uh, mostly fast. <laughs> no, we got to. <laughs> go ahead, bro. Let's do the Sixers first, man. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, we got to give the people a show, all right? Yeah. Uh, 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 they stuck by us. Nap, yeah. They stuck by us for about 18 good minutes trying ready. to get a nap. He they stuck ready to go by us. early. He was like, we fucked up, man. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, he's trying to get a nap. He's trying to get a nap. I've been there since 4 a.m. Rainy season. You're moving? Yeah. The rainy season messed up the Wi Fi. The people stuck by us. Uh, we're delivering them a show because we're contractually obligated to if we really want to get this bag. I know we had talked about it in the stream that we just get it when it starts, but. Hey, my lawyer, apparently we have to actually do a full episode, so here How we are. I function getting up at 4 a.m.? Mm. For me? Yes. I have, after the show, I take a nap. I know that for nap. about, like, once I'm up, I don't know if I... Oh, I take, I, I take a nap for about four hours, four, four five hours. Oh, after, oh, that's that's going call. to bed. I take two, yeah, I I take that's two going naps. to bed, yeah, that's, Gilbert. That's Anything over Anything two hours. Anything over two hours, you going to bed. Oh, yeah, oh. I go to bed right after this. Yeah, you yeah, going to bed yeah, right yeah, after yeah, this. Yeah, so yeah, night, yeah, wake up midday. What time you go to bed? You did that nightcap. What time you go to bed? You go to bed right after that? I went to bed at 12.30, 12.30 a.m. So that's the nap. Maybe. That's the nap. Maybe 12.30 a.m., 1, and then I was back up at 4.30. Yeah. Yeah, that's your nap right there. You're going to bed after the show. Hardest yeah. working man in sports. That's why you are number seven this year. You will keep climbing the ranks. We, I should say, we were all number seven. Mm-hmm. The Gills Arena contingent. And we will get to at least number three. What days y'all be doing a nightcap? Wednesday. Always Wednesday? Yeah, so I had to do Bomani early. And do Bomani, then, uh, then this. Own show. And then, yeah, I was... Pockets. I was on that computer like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to yeah. close your mind a little bit. <laughs> yeah. That screen too much. You got to look away every once in a while. You got to look away. But let's talk about uh, the Sixers a little bit. So reigning MVP Joel Embiid has been virtually unstoppable in December. Came through with another huge performance against the league's best defense on Wednesday night. So Embiid dropped 51 p- points on the Wolves' dome. 17 for 25 from the field. An incredible 17 for 18 from the line. Ooh, he did the slow-mo on mm. Boy. Along with 12 boards. Yeah, he, I mean, he, he just had them dudes looking silly. Ran through all, all, all their big men. Warned him to kick that to the corner, though. Tyrese Maxey, too. We got to give him a little love as well. He had 35 and 5 doing his thug thizzle mm. over Gobert. We got one more Maxey play. Oop. 
He look. He looked like. I see. Anytime I see a dude with zero, cooking like that, I'm like, damn. This reminds me of Gil. Not not exactly, but I'm just <laughs> like that. The change of pace, ability to get to the bucket. Yeah. Let's talk about Embiid a little bit. The first player in the last 50 years to have 12 straight games with 30 plus points, 10 plus rebounds. Only other players to do it in the last 60 years are Kareem and Will. You nope. said big man or players? What? Big man? You said no. big man? First player. First player to average 30? No, to have 30 and 12. 12 30 straight oh. games. Of, I know you, every 30 time, and 12 rebounds or just 30? 30, 30, 30 and 10 rebounds. 30 and 12 straight games. Oh, oh. I, know you already, see, I know you're already trying to refute. Yeah, I was going to say, I was like, didn't James Harden have about... Uh, uh, I don't know. 13 like, games? That was just 10 points. rebounds. 30 plus points, points, 10 yeah. plus rebounds, 12 consecutive games. Okay. Well, okay. How, how many times did the other two do it, though? So I think, I mean, I, I, what's going to have 16 oh. and then what's going to have 12? No. Um, um, Will, how many, how many Kareem, different streaks? Kareem has 16, 16, 16 and Will was 12. Yeah. And yeah. Okay, so okay, so I didn't want it to be like 25, 20, and then no, it was like, no, wait. No, no, it was no. close. <laughs> <laughs> but he's still going. You know how they dumb it all the way down for somebody he's to get in there. still going, though. Yeah, but uh, he's, still, he's, still, he's still going. So, so far in December. And it's in, rate. Yeah. And if it's Will, if it's Will and who? Kareem. And if it's Will, mm-hmm. I, if it's Will, and Will's if it's Will, I'm pretty sure that those 12 was actually triple doubles. As soon as they put the stat up, I thought I knew he was going to. I was like, Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was like, triple double because he averaged 14 points. Yeah. Shout out NBA TV. You know, I already know. <laughs> watch the game. Shout out Lord Jabara, Isaiah Thomas, that whole crew. Yeah. You know, I watch it on repeat till about two in the morning. So you go, you go to bed, you wake up before I'm, I'm up to about four in the morning. Okay. I'm a night owl. But uh, so far in December, Embiid is averaging 41 points, 13 rebounds, four assists, two blocks, 1.4 steals while shooting, 62% from the field. Close to 38% from three, and a ridiculous 93% from the free throw line. It's 92.5. We round up out of respect. The Sixers also have the second best offensive and defensive rating in the league and lead the league in net rating as well. So what's the Sixers stealing when Embiid is putting up numbers like this? Oh, I said a better way. Can, can they beat the Bucks and can they beat the Celtics with Embiid playing at this level? It's your new team. No, I know what he said. He said they can't beat the Celtics, so he already think they ain't going to Oh, yeah. I, I, I mean, Embiid is doing what Embiid do, but for some reason that green got his number. So um, we're going to have to see what that matchup looks like in the playoffs. But right now, I mean, he's unstoppable. He's playing the way that we envisioned him to play. So um, this ain't no, it ain't no him right now. He's he doing exactly what we said. Yeah, it ain't no him right now. This is everybody else. He's, we said he needs to average, he averaged 33 last year. He was, we said he needs to average 35 this year. Mm-hmm. He averaging 35 right now. Yes, sir. So, uh, All yeah, no. Nah, we don't know what the ceiling is because yeah, this is think, the first time we get to see him do this. That's, I, yes, that is. I, I just think in a playoff series, man, no matter who it is, if he makes up his mind that he gonna play like this. Minimum of four games, maximum of seven games in the series. If he, make, he gonna do this, good luck to the opposing team on who it is. Yeah, yeah mm. know what it is. y'all know what it is, right? Yes. In the season one, we had a conversation with that guy, right? He came on set and shit. Tried to set everything on fire, but I had to but the extinguisher on that nigga, he playing with Joel right now. He didn't gave that man that injection of confidence, trust, loyalty. Patrick Beverly has contributed to Joel Embiid being at this championship level. Mm-hmm. And the moment he started doing them 17s and he started holding him accountable, it was probably uncomfortable for Joel at first, but then, you know, as Pat <clears throat> does what he does because he's compassionate, and I think that uh, everybody gets what we did on this show fucked up because I, I always had respect for him. And I ain't lose respect for him based on, you know, with some bullshit that he said for some clout. But he still got that mentality of a, of, a cha- of, a, of a champion or a guy who knows what it takes to go get it. 
And he's giving Joel that that boost, and you can see it because you guys are asking for him to do this, do more. And he, to me, he hasn't changed anything. Everything is same place. It's just more consistent, and he he has that. I know I got it. So, I know I got it. So I'm contributing it all to Pat Bev. Yeah. So we're gonna ask you guys how much love does Pat Bev deserve for helping him be get his mind and body right this season? We ran that video clip of him a while ago saying that. He had him running 17s, and all right, like, let's go, all right, like, come on, big fella, let's run. But having somebody like that on your roster who's going to hold players accountable and get them to that next level. That's what Jimmy Butler was doing when he was there. You know, that's going to always be that Achilles heel for them is, you know, choosing a coach over Jimmy and then getting rid of the coach the next year any goddamn way. Crazy. Right, so um, with, with Pat, you know, that was our, our big thing last year. In those fourth quarters, last five minutes, Joel usually struggled because he was out of shape. Mm-hmm. He got tired, right? Um, and he didn't trust his teammates at the end, so he was going to force those shots anyway. So now it looks like he has a little bit more wind to take him over the top. But it could be coaching, too, in rotation, right? Definitely. That, too, 100%. No, 100%, because he's playing the whole first quarter. Mm-hmm. He's playing the whole third quarter. So he's doing most of his damage first and third. Mm -hmm. He's playing the last five minutes, six minutes of the second quarter, and the same thing in the fourth. Mm -hmm. So he's fresh. And and lately, he ain't been playing in the fourth. Mm -hmm. Played the fourth yesterday because it was a close game. But lately, he ain't been playing in the fourth. Yeah. So last night, he had 34 going into the fourth or some shit. So he's been putting up, but but the game was close. Mm -hmm. So you like that that move by Nurse? Yeah, you no, know, if you figure out what he had as a player, like what he had. Um, but it's on Joel to realize like this this is easy. Mm-hmm. Yep. This is easy, this is easy work. This is for him and seeing it, it's like, yo, I knew it was good before. It's like, yo, this damn boy really good. <laughs> I'm watching it in real time and just, yeah, it's easy. And, and I think that was a problem. It was so easy that he never needed to tap into that extra gear, mm-hmm. right? And it's, it's that big old, it's the big argument is when you tell someone, hey, man, you, there's another level. And then they sit there and say, well, I got rings. I got an MVP. What I need to go to that level for? Yeah, what I need it for. Because that's where the greats went. <laughs> yeah. Right, the greats didn't. The greats didn't stand on their accomplishments. That's the problem with society, right? They, you say something, they was like, "Well, you didn't win. <laughs> you didn't do this." No, I'm. I, I'm look. I'm listening to what that man did. The, the, the Michael Jordan and all of them. They said. <laughs> they said that they didn't give a fuck about the three. They. they the process is what they fell in love with. As long as you fall in love with the process, everything that's awarded to you is going to be awarded to you. And I'm saying, hey, being in shape, losing 20 pounds, doing this and doing that, whatever you're seeking will come. But if you're satisfied with 33 and 12, cool. That's what's up. But you you got more in you because I can see you got more in you because it's so easy for you. So, so MB's nickname is The Process. And it's funny you say that, Gil, uh, you know, Initially, when you said if you had the motor like Giannis, everybody thought you were hating. They, they said, you know, people who never won shit asked you what you had won. And I'm looking at that. But with you and, and sitting next to you for so long, understanding what you actually were trying to tell to do. Like, yes, these numbers are magnificent. But if you're watching, I can see that you can get to 40 a game if you really apply yourself, put your mind into it. Now he's taking that advice, maybe Pat Bev, maybe even within himself to get there. And now he's looking like, all right, I'm gonna get this second MVP, and it's really not, you know, a not discussion. Now, now if I don't get it, this is like you said before, last year MVP probably belonged to Joker, MB got it, but this year is gonna leave no doubt, mm-hmm. and he is the most valuable player in the NBA. How many minutes is he is he averaging right now? Same, same. What's it, 34, 34? 33, so 34. Think about that. If he go, if he was to he go up in the minutes. If he played the minutes we played, minutes. he ain't been playing in the fourth though. That's yeah. if he played the thirty-eight, he would average thirty-eight. And no need for him. Thirty-eight. And he he sh- and he's 38, he's at, all his free throws. Like that's what's crazy to me. Been seventeen for seventeen from free throws. Playoff series, I think he'd get up to those numbers. Yeah. Because he's well, in the rotation. So he's gonna have to, right? If they, if they want to do something. I'm gonna say short in the rotation, he'll start playing the 30, 30, 
36, 37, 38. He's going to put up like, monster numbers because he's going to be in shape for that shit. He's going to be in shape for the playoffs. That's crazy. Back then, we were playing 42, 43 minutes. Crazy. Bro. But question for you, because I think it's a similar point you made with Giannis. Giannis was always playing 32, 33-minute range because the Bucks were smacking teams and he didn't have to play much in those fourth quarters. Is that going to be detrimental come postseason? Now when we need you to up mm -hmm. it to 41, 42, and you're not used to playing at that level? Not because if you're doing your cardio weekly, understanding that this is longevity, then you should be fine. Yeah. Long as you're, long as you put in the work outside of the game, then you sh you should be fine. We shall see. So. A little lighter side, we got an a interesting video from the game uh, as MB was cooking, Kelly Oubre gotta be trying to get his as 12. Who's <laughs> hurting you? <laughs> oh, that brother's starving. <laughs> you might as well take your ass back down the court. That brother is starving. That brother's starving over there. Yeah, how you reacted if your teammate uh, was calling for the ball like that when you're in the middle of dropping a 50 piece? Yeah, I don't give a fuck about that because I don't see that over there. <laughs> the, 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 the one thing that I, I, I try to point out on something like that is if you look at some players and some players that don't have a lot of assists, you got to understand sometimes why, right? Max, he comes off the screen, hits him. That's a jump shot right there, yep. right? Mm -hmm. That's a jump shot. Boom. Uh, nice little jumper. What do you do? Pump fake, jab, mm -hmm. jab, wait it. Hit the same fucking shot, but he don't get the same, he don't get that assist. Are that you mad if you're mad? Hell yeah. Piss. Yeah. Piss. What? Shoot that shit. Nigga, you open. I used to, because Karan used to do that shit, right? Karan would come. Get his rhythm. Throw up. <laughs> he pump fake. Ha, 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 ha. And shoot the same shot, yep. but I don't got the assist at all. Oh, my God, man. You averaging 20 points. I got half a, I'm averaging half a assist from you. <laughs> right, but that's why I like my pick and roll was Antoine all he the time. He shoot that bitch right away. He gonna shoot it right. Or so a I'm floater. Getting, I'm getting four assists from Antoine, a half assists from Karan. Big man, help your guards out. But that, but that be a thing. Put same that thing, shit up. Same thing. Why like somebody like Tony Parker couldn't average a lot of assists. Some yeah. some reason that 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 statement of if you have a a pure point, then you don't really have a dominant big or a dominant guard because. You got to get them the ball, which takes away from what makes this guard great, right? Because I don't need you to come off and hit. Hey, who the fuck out of the way? I, 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 I got, got you. I got you. Ah! He had 50. How many points? How many assists did Maxie have? Six. Five. Well, he had 35 points, too, though. Who? Max. No, no, but the, the, your big man, the, pa the dude you passed the ball to the whole time. But well, he wasn't doing too much passing. But Max, he had five assists. <laughs> yeah, he supposed to have ten for sure, because he did that shit a lot. He did that shit a lot. He, he would grab that bitch in the middle and, uh, uh, like, shoot the first one, bro. Ooh, what you doing? Gotta get his There's a kid be cussing his ass out. Hey, hold on, goddammit. <laughs> hold on, <laughs> motherfucker. Shoot as soon as I get to you. <laughs> I'm going to give it to you where you can shoot it. So, <laughs> so uh, for his career, Embiid shooting 50% from the field, 33% from three, 82% from the free throw line. So I just want to know, in this modern era, in this era currently, is he the most skill scoring center in the game? Skill scoring, yeah. So fuck Easy. Cool. And but where would you put him at against some of the big scoring centers historically? Ever? You said ever? One. When I look at three point percentage, free throw percentage, just you the can't ability. take away. No, you can't take you can't take three point because back then big men couldn't shoot three, so that's unfair for them. Um, then free throw percentage. Free throw. When people say people, when people use like just because he can make free throws, don't make him dominate. Actually, it does. Yes, it does. Because what happens is the last five, the last four minutes, when you need a bucket, you can actually pass him the ball, and you don't have to worry about him getting fouled. Right? So as, as, as dominant as Shaq was, if we can foul him so he wasn't guaranteed to two, now you go up there and miss all your free throws and keep us in the game, that is great for us. Absolutely. Right? So that's what makes him more dominant in a sense where he can be counted on at the end of the game and keep his dominancy. Yeah. There's no hack of Shaq. And there's no rules like that with Joel Embiid. You can't do that with Joel Embiid. Yeah. But the other sin is you could because they couldn't, they couldn't, they couldn't shoot free throws. And it's not a knock to Shaq in terms of dominance. Obviously, you get in that post and nobody... One, two, three. Play. One, two, three. Oh, shit. Fourth quarter, foul him. <laughs> what, we down 10? Foul him. Shit, woo, that's... 
you know, missed these two free throws. You done right shot 10 game. free throws. He made one. Good. Because, I mean, I, that's the issue at every level of basketball, especially with the bigs. You got Embiid, and just looking at that game last night, 17 for 18. I mean, that's like... And he missed his last free throw of the game. Yeah, you know Wait, did I mean? they, put a, they, put a, they put a rule in there, didn't they, for Shaq and his free throws? Well, we couldn't foul. It was like a penalty. Or the last two minutes. They had the, the, the hacker shack. It was the last two minutes you couldn't just foul him. You just couldn't foul him, right? Yeah, but before yeah. that, you could walk up to him and just... Before the end, that's why I It had to be a play on the ball. Yeah, because... Then, then, then they put that in there. Then they put that, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. It's because of... Because we were doing that. Like, oh, shit, Kobe got an ISO. Shaq, all right, wow. Ah, I got him. <laughs> Sorry, Kobe. <laughs> hey, question. <laughs> did, did you agree with that rule? Which one? It's fucking about winning, dog. But my point is, the, the league, the league added oh, that no, rule. No, oh, no, is that for bullshit? That's, yeah, that shit was that's, You know what I'm saying? Like, that shit was for you as players who, who try and, and look at loopholes, try to find competitive advantage in this game, if a dude can't shoot free throws, that's not. Yeah, that, that was, it was weak because he should be going in the free throw uh, in the gym working on his free throws. Don't penalize us because he can't do this. So you helping him out. Because he can't make it and we all taking advantage of it. Yeah, they're supposed to be the most dominant team for three quarters. Because <laughs> this fourth quarter, we found a loophole. Mm. Now you wanna now you wanna close the hoop hole up because the, this big dominant team can't can be dominant in the fourth quarter because dude can't shoot the free throws like that. That's not our problem. Um, I think Joel is a mix between Carl Malone and Akeem Olajuwon. He can shoot the jumper in the pick and roll, and he got all the moves down there. He can he can spin, he can he can he can fade, he can he can bully you, he can he can play defense like that type of. I was trying to miss like all right, you got David Robinson, but he ain't really had that post game like that. He might be the he might be the best one because Shaq didn't really have the post moves. No, like, no, Shaq like, had post moves. Like that, him. like that. No, no, no. He, he had to actually. He didn't need. He didn't need him outside of Kareem. I mean, outside of Hakeem, Shaq probably had the best post moves. Yeah. Kevin McHale. Yeah. Hell no. Nah. What you mean, hell no? Nah. Man, if you Kevin if you, McHale drill. Man, Ooh. most of those dudes only. Most yes, of those dudes went. He had hell of post moves. Most most of those dudes went one way. If you just look at they take like even Pat Ewan, he just went. The, he went the same. He's going over his right shoulder. Right shoulder. It's, it's, if he's on this side, he's gonna go fade away baseline. How you do it. If he go on this side, he's gonna try to it's hop foot. through middle. It's the same move. It's all footwork though. He ain't going over his left shoulder whatsoever. Footwork. <laughs> whatsoever. I watch him. The 55 game, he had a whole bunch of free throws going one way. Like, dog, y'all supposed to be the best team defensive team on the planet ever. And you don't know he's going the same way the whole game? There's a problem here. Y'all ain't as smart as y'all say y'all was. Just like Ginobili going left every time. Mm. All right, now let's talk about the the best team in LA currently, based on record, uh, the Clippers of Los Angeles. Uh, they were without Paul George on Wednesday night for their game against the Mavs, but they did have Kawhi, and Kawhi is still cooking. Let's take a look at the highlights. He dropped 30 points, 10 rebounds, a five assists, and win, including this Euro step that had the squad going crazy. Let's take another look. Look at Harden. <laughs> I mean, even for me, like, just seeing things like that, team all locked in, reactions, like, it seems like now they're building that chemistry. They're actually rocking with each other. So the Clippers have now won a league leading nine straight games. And after starting the season three and seven, getting clowned by the basketball world, including people on this couch, they're now 17 and 10, four seed in the West, three and a half games behind the Wolves for the top spot. From what you've seen now in December, good. Uh, when the trade first happened, you said they could rattle off 10, 20 straight. They're teetering on the brink of 10. Don't know if they could do 20, but 10 would, would be sufficient. Uh, is it time to start putting some respect on the Clippers' name? Do you believe what you're seeing with the squad? No, I mean, you know, they have, you, you have four, you have four dominant players on one team. Like, I don't, I'm, that's why I said it's never been done before. Right, it's never been it's never been assembled before. I mean, you know, if you think about the Lakers with Karl Malone and Gary, Gary Payton was a, wasn't a score like that, right? Um, so this is probably the most offensively skilled team that's probably ever been put together. So just the ability of what they they can do individually, if they have 
any sense of basketball. We, remember, we was going to say, you know, we're going to check this. This is about to check their they basketball IQ. And, you know, so far, they mm. these last nine games, they've shown that we can't be dominant. Yeah, no, we were critical of the move and the way they were playing at first. And to Gil, Lord, um, to Gil's point, like, Something yeah, broke. we, yeah, we definitely um, are seeing what they could be. If they check the ego, bought into the past, bought into playing faster, um, this could be the result. But talent-wise, we never questioned the talent. It was just whether it was going to come together yeah. mm -hmm. and how long it was going to take to come together. And lots sooner than some expected, not soon enough for some, but mm -hmm. right now they're playing excellent basketball. So you got to look at that and whatever they're doing and the formula that they created is working yeah. for the last nine games and, and shit. We all know how winning going in this league, and once you get on that roll and mm -hmm. night in, night out, and the way this league is and the talent they have, they can run off some more. I think health was obviously a major concern with this squad just in the Kawhi and PG era. I think PG's only missed two games this season. Kawhi's played every game this season, so you got to factor that in as well. But let's talk a little bit about this squad. I mean, when you look at this team, Gil, we're from L.A. You got PG, Palmdale, we count it. Kawhi Inland Empire, we embrace him. Westbrook, L.A. guy, Harden, L.A. guy, Norm Powell from San Diego, but went to UCLA. So the bulk of this roster is local guys, but the Clippers still don't get the love that they deserve. So we got a tweet uh, from my guy Nate Jones, very astute. He said, Clippers have four Southern California race stars, and most people <laughs> in L.A. don't give a fuck. Facts. So I think, will the Clippers always be the JV team in L.A.? Yeah. Right, they have no respect. They never earned any, so why should they get some? You know, I mean, you know, it's just, that's just a fact, right? Um, if they want any respect, they're going to have to go to, they got to go to their own city, right? This is, you know, it's, it's, like, any, it's like any team. It's going to be like Brooklyn and New York. They're not going to respect that team. I don't, I don't so care what they're going to get them out of L.A.? Hell yeah. Put them in San Diego, Santa Barbara. Shit, Fresno. <laughs> Shit, here in L.A., they, I don't care what they do, they're not even more popular than the Sparks. Kings, huh? Rams. It's championships. Th th this, has been built, this has been built since the 70s. You said the Clippers are not I'm just, more fan. Championships. Remember, Clippers is not from here. They're not originally from here. They ain't San Diego, right? Buffalo, San Buffalo, Diego. Buffalo, that's, that's not and a... That, and they don't have any Buffalo championships, Clippers. so it's... Yeah, like there was a Buffalo people, Clippers, San Diego. People were buying the winning. Buffalo Braves, I think, San Diego Clippers. I don't know where they started. They had too big of a... But the brain, like... They had L.A., two, the Clippers... Their history on but losing Lakers, is too, Minneapolis, I mean, I'm just saying, like, like... their history on losing is too... Like the Cleveland it's, Browns. It's indebted. Like, it's, it's deep. Yeah. Like, it's deep. In. Like so, it's, they gotta dig deep. stuff out of that hole. Just like Cleveland, Cleveland Browns, man. Do they? But, but, but there's hole. another football team over there. Like today, they step out of that hole. It's tough. And they competing with 16 world championships. Like that's like. 18. You, you who? We got 18. I, I can say this. 17. <laughs> no, 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 no. What I'm saying is, <laughs> think, think about it. 17. The NBA 17. Cup World Champions of the World. They have 17 world, 17 NBA titles. Like if Clippers won that world, that world championship, it would actually have been laughed at. If they won the yeah. NBA Cup, if yeah. they, it's just the only thing they could win, right? It yeah. would have been more jokes. But you're talking about Clipper fans. Clipper fans are considered people who hate success. What? The only reason you became a Clipper fan is because you hated seeing another team win so much. Think about the concept of if L.A. Lakers was winning so many and you're going to go be a Clipper fan, it's because you hated just seeing this team win so much. And I need to be a Clipper fan just so I can root against you. So would you discredit the Clippers if they would have won the bubble? No, that's a championship. Because that means they, if, they had to beat, if they had to beat through the Lakers, it, been the, it was the easiest championship for them. Oh, not for anybody. 
For them. Not for the Lakers. If they play Lakers seven games at that Staples Center, whose crowd is that? All runs, anything, they booing, they booing Clippers at the free at the at the home crowd. So it's seven games Lakers. Well, I'm, that I'm, bubble made it fair. I'm just saying, like, if the Clippers would have won the bubble, would that have changed the dynamic of LA? No. Hell no. I don't think one, I mean, it's gonna take multiple chips to do that. But for like you're saying this deep, 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 would that have like Gotten no. it out a little bit. No, that's no. Seven, sixteen. It would have just gave the people who like the Clippers something to cheer about. Something yeah. to cheer about for the next twenty years. For the next, however many years. So what's the divide between the people who love the Lakers and the people who love Clippers percentage wise? In LA, it's tough. It's the it's same tough. as, as, as like sixty forty. No, it's the Yankees, Mets, yeah. it's, Jets. It's, it's the Jets, Giants. Oh, yeah. It's but, it's the Dodgers, Angels. But, it's, but a Clippers historic. You talk about 80s, 90s, that Donald Sterling stench yeah. of just doo doo, uh, cheap practicing at the YMCA. I mean, my pops played for those teams. Just, you know, Canyon. Yeah. I feel like you got to play on a, a new version of it. It was ushering in a new era. Steve Ballmer coming in. I know. I was yeah, like I know. But I'm, you know, but. The old regime. Even, even Sterling at that point got, oh, he was worried about a side boot with the visor. But like the team was actually starting to perform, starting to be good. And kind of still haven't been able to break through, but now you've got a squad full of guys. The yeah, LA yeah, guys, but, but, but that's win, no, you gotta win to get <coughs> to get the masses to buy in. You but, have to win and win consistently. But I'm afraid. I, but it's one of those things. Once they start winning and winning, they might lose who they are. They might lose the fan base. That fan base is just. It's like you know what I mean. It's like. <laughs> are you afraid? No, it's like a late, it's like Laker. It's like the people who hate LeBron, right? Or who hated Jordan. Think about the people who hated the Bulls. They, why did they hate the Bulls? Because they're number one all the time. Yeah. And I want to see something new. I don't like watching purple and gold. Who, who, who are they playing against? Clippers? Let me go. It's that, it's that fan base. It's the fan base that didn't like, I don't like the winner. I want to I wanna go against the villain. Like the Warriors. Or they, but would you or say the Warriors are like Not even the yeah. villain. Some people like the underdog. Yeah. Right. So it ain't even being a villain. It's the That's underdog. That's the same shit. No, it's the villain. I like the motherfucker who, who got no chance of winning. It's got the no new chance. Team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like a loser. <laughs> yeah, people like the underdog. So it's an underdog story in sports. They want to see the... Whoop, whoop. Uh, I'm just, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, whoop, they whoop. Want see, <laughs> they want to see them win. Uh, they want to see them succeed. And unfortunately, that hasn't transpired in their existence. Yeah. You talk about Warriors fans, right? Warriors fans, super loyal, super dedicated, dealt with a lot of tough times, right? Rattled off championships. But it's different. You don't have no competition. Yeah, own city. That, what I'm saying is you don't have competition. That's the other. That should right? be if it was just Lakers way. by themselves, yes. But the fact that there's two teams, one is it's, it's true or false, right? All the answers is true, right? <laughs> right? All the answers are true. The fact that Lakers is going true, 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 and the, the Clippers is purposely saying false. He has to switch at some point, goddammit. <laughs> no, motherfucker. I'm going to just keep going. I'm going to ride this motherfucker through until it changes. They're like, nah, it's going to change at some point. I'm going to just keep false. Roulette. False. Like, false. Roulette. False. Roulette. False. False. I'm false. False. Big false. Black. false. False. I'm going false. back. Oh, it's going. True. False. No. False. False. <laughs> and that's what the Clippers <laughs> were like. Hey, man, just get the purple and go. Get you a win under your belt. <laughs> get, get a win. And then say, you know what? I'm going to head into the Clippers. Like, it's. It's like back rap, man. I'm riding a motherfucker until it switches over. To when it switch, switch over, over, you know what I mean? Banker, 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 banker. banker, banker. Okay. Switch. Player, player. Player, yeah. player, 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 player. Riding the moment. Man, I'm not going to sit there and try to be the one. Right. <laughs> I done lost $100,000 just to be right one time. Yeah, Hell no, nah, I ain't yeah. that dumb. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, well, let's, let's move on to our last segment of the week. Woo! Mostly fans. Woo! As always. You send us a, a your underdog fantasy Whoa. user Whoa. dog to use it on the show. Last segment, baby. Can't we'll wait, give you $50. Hey, I'm over here struggling. <laughs> can't, can't keep my eyes open. <laughs> I'm like a Clippers fan. I'm struggling. Yeah, you got to get them sleeping patterns right. You're taking, you're taking your full sleep in the middle of the day and your nap at 12, 1 a.m. You got to yeah. reverse it. You're right. Uh, one you gotta, day. Not today. But as long as you show up <laughs> every day for Gil's Arena and we're keeping these checks, I think we're all happy. So our first... Question is a video question from underdog user by the name of Devo Jeffo. 
What's up, Gil's Arena family, man? Uh, appreciate y'all. Y'all helped me get through work a lot of the time, man. Probably one of the best shows that I watch. Um, question for the day is, as far as the habitually bad franchises like the Magics and the Pistons and teams like that, um, do you guys think if they got a superstar caliber player, would that help their franchise out and would that propel them to the next level? Or would they just continue to be habitually bad because of the franchise and ownership and the decision makers and things like that? Appreciate y'all. Yeah, have a good one. Hey, we appreciate you, Devo, Jeffo. 30 to 40 seconds. No noise in the background. Mm. Did not see a TV with Gills Arena on it, though. That's my only note for you. Yeah, at work, though. You better be careful doing that yeah. shit at work. Boss, boy. But his boss probably watching, too. We well, not getting mm. responsible for you getting fired on your day off, His boss like, what up with that $50 underdog bonus you just got? Yeah, well, I was watching in the back, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get these higher <laughs> lowers going. So he said, for habitually bad franchise like the Magic and Pistons, will a superstar player help their franchise, or will they just continue to be bad because of ownership decision-making? Um, usually bottom feeding teams need to build within, right? They need to build the culture first. Uh, they need to build a culture of um, being accountable, being successful. Like you don't have to be successful to build a culture of success, right? It has to be implemented to, to, to get the players to buy in. And then once you start building within, it'd be easier to recruit. You can't rely on recruiting. Right, because you know some of your cities, you're just not going to get top stars that just say, "Oh, I want to go over there." So most of your most of your heavy lifting will be internal, lucky drive, and then hopefully someone stupid enough to trade a player to you that will help you get over the top. Yeah, some places I think the fucking doomed. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying no names, but it's some of these places I don't think ever going to win for whatever reason. Minnesota. <laughs> I'm sorry. Fine people in Minnesota. They have something to be proud of now. They got a team they can get behind. Yeah, I just That's, think some, some organizations are just not going. They just do. They just Graveyards. Do. For whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And I just, it, it's just that. And historically, it's been that throughout sports, not just in basketball, but throughout sports. Um, yeah, man. It's, yeah, they can build within like the Warriors did. I think if, if you want to look at a recipe on how to do it, mm -hmm. then you have someone who done it yeah. recently. But to stick with something and a coach and these days, people put things in the microwave and want that shit to come out done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a one year, two year situation. And like, oh, shit didn't work. Got to move on. <laughs> Which is unfortunate because well, it, Certain things and winning takes time, and to build something and get the right coach in that place, and for him to be able to implement or be able to get the type of players that he needs, and to implement what he believe in, might take two, three years, three, yeah. four years. But nowadays, they don't get that kind of time. Yeah, I mean, I think you know it's hard to see a team kind of replicating the word success and getting the Steph, getting the Clay, getting the Dre. That, I mean, that you don't need those players, but you need yeah. you need to build a you need a. You need a Dame Lillard. You need to, okay, you got him. Okay, now I go get another piece. Which, yeah. Okay, we got a CJ McCullough. Okay, we, okay, now we can go get another piece. Oh, this shit didn't work for this long. Yeah. We didn't go get another piece that we, when we needed it. And I need these guys to actually stay, which it's, is the hardest it's part. It's the hardest part because I didn't do what I was supposed to prior to these last three years. Now we're like, oh, shit, now we got to get rid of these guys mm -hmm. now because we hadn't done right by them so far. And it's the same thing within, so now you have a formula so you can make some trades and draft like Sacramento. Mm -hmm. Now you have a formula and something that's yeah. that's building in, it's trajecting in the right direction, Yeah. but it takes time. And they don't, they're not allowed that these days. Yeah. It takes some deep cleaning. I think that um, a lot of these, uh, these franchises we're talking about, uh, even when we look at Denver, we look at the Milwaukee Bucks, they had to do some deep cleaning before they won they, their first chips in, in a long time. So I think that with the Orlando Magics and the, um, those bottom feeding teams, they got to do deep cleaning. They got to go in internally and switch around the things that make the, the organization so comfortable doing, whether it's bad business or just mediocre picks and not really going and, and analyzing who you're, you're drafting. Um, once you do that deep cleaning, everything else, yeah. you know, cleans itself.
You're talking about Nuggets' first first title franchise history this past season. Yeah. So. I mean, you look at the Nuggets when they broke that team up. They had to do deep cleaning. You know what I'm saying? They had Wilson Chandler, Gallinari, all them. Then, you know, they get the Joker in the draft and Nurkic in the, in the draft, and they just cleaned it up. They changed front office guys and made some moves. Next question from underdog user by the name of Clean Paper 414. What's happening, Gills Arena? Just got a quick question for y'all. What do y'all think the NBA should do about the Ben Simmons thing or what's going on with Ben Simmons or what do you think the Nets should do and how does the locker room feel? And another question is, do you think the NBA players and sports players know that the Kardashians are bad luck? Y'all be easy. Not as bad as you fucking smoking that cigarette, nigga. That Lucy in there, nigga. As, <laughs> Let that man that's, in his heater. That's, that's a, he tried to hide that's it. That's the worst look, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking that goddamn death stick. He said, I'm in the car smoking. Leave me alone, nigga. Windows but, up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm in the car. Cold out there. It's cold out there. It was in the D. <laughs> <laughs> he looked like he was in the D. Yeah. Uh, to be question, honest, dude? I mean, you know, Cam <laughs> Thomas been balling so much. <laughs> You know, them boys four, been balling. What's the Ben? I think he's in Milwaukee. What's going on? Them boys has been balling. You said Ben Simmons. I think, so he's clean paper 414. I think he's in Milwaukee. Oh. 414 area cut. No, I'm saying that ben, ben Simmons has been playing so, I mean, not Ben Simmons, but the team has been shooting so well. And, you know, there's been some, some light that, you know, players are getting and the city is getting, you know, um, excited about that. I don't, I didn't even realize Ben Simmons wasn't really playing. No me either. Like, what, is he not playing coach's decision? Back you out of me. Uh, I need a couple more weeks. I was injured. So he yeah, got a bad injury. back. Yeah. So he's asking about what we think about the what Ben Simmons it? injury and what is, is it affecting the locker room? That or if the league should step in. or And also just uh, are the Kardashians bad luck? Is this all? We won't answer no more Kardashian questions, man. What if we give you a hundred dollar hundred dollar bonus saying, to your hundred dollar fantasy user account? I'm just saying it's been so long, man. I'm, <laughs> if his think, back is no, really hurt, no one. I, I, the, the problem is the, the answer is no, no one cares. He ain't. Be, what I'm saying is the guys that I'm pretty sure the guys that are there now are really excited because they're getting an opportunity to play. That's what I'm saying. We didn't know he wasn't playing because no, I, the, the media has, the media has really forgotten about it. Yeah, they just moved talking. on. Yeah. Yeah. No. He hasn't been here for three years now, so everyone's just moved on. Yeah, yeah. it's a small topic now. Okay, Ben Simmons out, and it's it's not as yeah as as it was. So yeah, I don't think we got, we got so comfortable guys with getting it. opportunities now, man. Like shit, I make the best he's moving on. Can he help the team? Don't don't don't, don't, don't matter. No one cares. Nuggets, that, that's what I think he. he what is no Nuggets currently ninth seed, thirteen or fourteen. He can help a team if he's available and playing. Yeah, but he's but, not available and playing, so don't nobody. And nobody really checking for him at this point. Do the best ability. The guys are rallying behind him. Okay. Or they, they abandoned nobody him. Nobody cares. Nobody's he, fucking with him. Bro, we didn't even know he wasn't playing. I'm talking about as a teammate. We don't know. I don't think they care. Why would? Because he consistent. wasn't here last year. He wasn't here the year before it's that. He wasn't here thing. this year. It's a consistent but we thing. Teammates. We moved on. But we all teammates though. We, yeah, we I go through. One you go through. You go through ailing injuries. You go through shit. That what you, I'm saying, like the Kawhi shit. Niggas ain't turning back against who? Who didn't on this team? Spurs did. On, no, I'm talking about when he when he's been in L.A. They haven't turned their back against on him for being injured, not being available. Because it's about it's his personality, man. No, no what kind team, of personality. Well, what what, what has he might like him? What I'm saying is, what has he done in, in, in the Brooklyn uniform for them to even know who he is? He's a part Remember, of the team, just like and, everybody, every, all you're just, 15 players. Okay, then you're just and, another, you're 15 or 14. You haven't been here to actually produce. But I haven't and, done anything for you guys to turn your back on me. As, we, as we're not team. even turning our back. We don't know you. <laughs> turning our back? How many points has he, how many points has he scored as a Brooklyn What do you mean we don't Brooklyn know you, though? What we do don't know you. Resume, what is your resume here? I'm Ben Simmons. Here, you're not Ben Simmons. You haven't been here. Okay, that's your name. You don't average what? You don't score what? Twenty points as a Brooklyn Nets player? Okay, your name is Ben Simmons. That's your birth certificate. Your resume Good. is there, not here. When we traded for you, you ain't played. Remember when Kevin Durant? You didn't play. Like some of those guys never played with Ben Simmons yet. What? Have you not realized they that? Played a whole year last year. Who? He didn't play last year. Not one minute. 
What are you talking about? Ben Simmons didn't play. Not no. one basketball minute last year. Did he play? What did he play for? He played. He played. Two years ago, he didn't oh, two play. Two years ago. Oh, last on, year, he on, played 42 on, games. We started basketball. Started 32 games. 42 games. No, he played. It was, yeah, 42 games win. When, when did last he? Last season? He played half a season. Bro, what? At the beginning of the season. No, Gil, he played, At bro. the beginning of the season. He played. Oh, I'm, 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 did he play with, how, how many games did he play with Mikael Bridges? I missed the whole year. He played at Mikhail. least 20 games. Mikael Bridges. So you missed the back end of the season. The back end of the season, when they traded. Yeah, I mean, When they made the trade for Mikael Bridges and Cam. Yeah, after the deadline, he only played, I think he appeared in like three or four games. So he's only, so with Mikael yeah. Bridges and Mikhail, that, that unit, two, two he guys. only played six, that's it. But that ain't the rest of the unit. What I'm, I'm talking is, about, why would the team turn their back the, on the, him? The, the, Phoenix, back. Uh, the Phoenix Suns players who, who got there, the guys who are, who are the stars now, they don't know him. He put, only played six games this season. So the t a total of two years with those guys, no. they've only played 10 games with him. And those 10 games, what he averaged, four, six points? So they, it's not like they turn in the back. They don't know who he is like that. Ain't nobody turning their back on him. You remember, you remember when Cam Thomas said something? He was like, I didn't even really play with KD. Yeah, when I, when I played, he wasn't playing. When he was playing, I wasn't playing. So I never played. I never got on the floor with him. I don't really know who he is. Same thing with Ben. Those two guys that came from Phoenix don't know him. So it's not like we don't have your back. We don't know you. You ain't been in the trenches with us. Just, it's just fortunate. Cam Thomas too. Shit, when Cam, Cam wasn't playing. <laughs> Cam, so the three main guys don't even have no games with him to even really get that yeah, from him. Can ain't nobody turn their back? Just don't. Just, just don't know him. You know, Think probably, about when I was hurt in, in Washington. Just imagine, he probably ain't even going on the road. Trips, nothing. But my, uh, this is what I'm just saying. I'm saying, like, if they going to say, hey, Ben Simmons is a non-factor on our team, we don't really need him, that's an energy that I'm saying, like, he's your teammate. At some point, y'all see his value can help the team. How? What, How? what value? What value? What you mean? What, why y'all keep saying that? Like, I've you don't know been, who he is. I, for two years, I've been 10 you games with you. You keep saying two years he played last year. Not with the guys who's playing. Never. How, how often do you play with the guys who came from another team, bro? But well, as soon as like, so, they made a trade. On, I think the point, they made right? a trade. He was hurt during the trade. Yeah, yeah. Back, been so, hurt. Okay, back so, after the season, no, he's not really around. So, so, he, so he played a couple games with him after the trade deadline. And then this year, only played six games with him. The same way that Kawhi Leonard was hurt all this time, we can't wait till he come back. Because he played games. But he's been there he played four more seasons. Games than he's been there four seasons. Four seasons. <laughs> Bro, what I'm saying is when Kawhi was hurt and we was looking for his return, when he didn't play a whole fucking season. Who? With Kawhi. Who? With, with the Clippers. He didn't with... play. When he didn't play, motherfuckers was still waiting. Like, yo. Who was the guys that was waiting? Whoever's on this fucking team. Because Lou Williams and Trez was traded because they're like, how's these guys, how's these guys getting all the recognition? And we the ones who's who's holding this team together. All I'm saying is that's why they got ben, traded. Ben Simmons deserves a little respect. From who? And for what? From his team. What team? The team he the Brooklyn Nets. We empathize with. You're him talking about two guys that came over from Three. the team. You're talking about like he like he don't have to get fully acclimated with them guys. He on the team, bro. I'm here before you guys are here. So y'all niggas need you to just be here. You ain't playing no fucking game. That's not how that works. He, he hurt. You heard to play he basketball. Hurt. Okay, cool. He hurt. Okay, so what do you want us to do with because you heard basketball? We empathize. Embrace me as. A teammate. Why? You're not here. Because I'm on your team. Cool. You're one of the other players that's on the team that's not playing. Cool. That you're embracing. You embrace everybody else. Embrace yes, me. Yes. But you're, you embrace me too. Why? I'm yeah, on the team. Embrace you to do Because I'm on the team to, to be a teammate. What? what? Okay, cool. Yeah, he's talking about impacting. Like impacting. He like, is an impact player. Is he? Yes. When? Not impact in the 10 games one. that I've been here. If I've been here for two years and you only played 10 games, with me? Come on, man. What? You're not even on my. You're not even my teammate like that. Come on, man. So now we're talking about ben. when John ben Wall. John ben. Wall missed two years because of his 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 problem. Bradley Beal held that team for two years. When John Wall came back and tried to be the captain, the rest of the players were like, wait, hold on, we don't know you. So, so we don't know Bradley Beal either, right? The Suns don't know Bradley Beal. He just right? got there. You don't know him, right? No. All right. Necessarily so, don't know so him. So he should get the same treatment, right? He just. He should where, get the same Ben Simmons treatment, how long right? Has, how long has he been there? So Are you trying to... There. Won't you listen? Ben has... Ben just got there. Got where? No, I mean, not Ben. Bill just got there. 
-hmm. He has to acclimate to this team. Ben has been there. People have been traded. But you, you traded. You traded. We don't I know you. you. So said, us don't three know has you. got there. You've been there on this team. Listen, we don't know you. We've played a total of a hundred and something games. You've played ten. Do you really think we give a fuck about what you're saying? Three, Be honest. Three guys. Be honest. Us three. He's averaging 20. Okay, he's ask, averaging 20. I'm averaging that, 20. You, Plaxton, then that. when he's there, Plaxton. you've played 10 games with us in two years. Do you think we care what you're talking about, though? You think should. about it. I'm your teammate. We, Why? We are practicing every day. We are taking losses. We're on a roll together. We in the club so because together. Because I'm the, hurt. I don't get what? to have, I don't get to be a part of that. You ain't a part of it. It ain't that you don't get to. You're not. You're not coming on a road trips with us, dude. Like, let's just be honest, man. It's just, I know it's crazy that you don't want to come on a road trip because you hurt. You want to stay back in Brooklyn when we on a road trip. You want to stay back in Brooklyn when we in Minnesota. Hey, do, what, do you really think we're respecting what you're doing? But are you giving that same energy to other players who are doing the same thing that Ben's doing? Exactly. Where, are you giving that who's energy doing it? to who's them? Doing it? Yes. Who's doing that? All the other players who are All injured. the other players are coming on a road trip with us. That's injury. No, injuries are part of sports, but we're talking about the guys that they ain't played basketball together. And what respect, not, like what, like who's... We're good? teammates. And? Why y'all keep talking about, like, you would want someone to respect you if you came off injury? You came oh, off injury, you come, you've been, you been injured two years, AK, hey, we see. Like, we don't know you, though. Ooh, they don't know me. We know who Kenya Martin is. Yeah, that's my ooh, name. But it's a we know who you are. The, the, that's my but name. But we're not going to disrespect your ability but the, because you've what, been what, injured. What ability? Because you've been injured. The ship is moved. It's moved already. Motherfuckers ain't waiting on you. Sir, nobody's help. waiting. Awesome. You what think because you average 21. Waiting to get, you, for you, you to get help. You are motherfuckers. You're talking about my teammates. What I'm saying is you average 21. We're talking you about get help. You average 21 in 2020 and you come back in 2023. You think you still a man on this team? What you mean? You miss Huh? Zion is misses all that time. You think Brandon Ingram, oh, Zion, you a number one pick? Here, yeah, I take a back seat. No, you get in where you fit in, homeboy. Because he missed how many games? Get in where you fit in. You did. missed one whole season. Mm -hmm. You missed 40 something games last year, whatever you missed last year. We coming into this season, you were not number one option no more. I've been the number one option for two years now. You're the number two option. I don't care what you're saying. Fit in where you get in. <laughs> Now, if you and you played some games last year, imagine if you only played ten. That don't sound like team basketball. That just sound like a bunch of motherfuckers. Just oh, because like you think you because you think your name so holds weight. No, you think your name holds weight every year. I'm thinking because I'm a teammate. So let me ask you this, child. Thinking because I'm a teammate so this. that you're not gonna pull this shit. So let me ask you this. So you want us to treat you like a teammate, but but your mannerisms and your attitude and how you walk around this motherfucker every day, like 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 the fucking world owe you something. So you want us to respect that. Yep. You ain't playing no fucking yep. games. If you won't respect and you ain't for playing me, no games. You no, won't respect that. for me. You're I'm doing the same games. thing I'm doing. How? We're playing you're doing this, you're walking we're around playing. doing the we're same playing, thing I'm doing. But I'm available. available. But you're walking around. I'm we're available. available. You're judging me I'm no, no, based I'm not. on the things you're I'm doing. Available. You're doing the same shit I'm doing. I'm and you're playing saying, basketball. Oh, I'm doing. But I'm hurt. But I'm hurt. But you can't walk around. But I'm hurt. I can do what I want. Oh, then you're going to get treated like that. walk around like you Because you're doing what you want. Yeah, because I'm playing. Because you're not hurt. I'm average 25. You're not hurt. I'm available. Whose fault is that? Huh? I'm available. Who was, if you was it not, your fault that you got hurt? No, I'm but available. I didn't. So what are you talking about, man? But I didn't act like I was the number about? one player on the team no more. Because That's the difference. You was the number one player. You was just hurt. I wasn't when I wasn't but playing. But you was hurt. The reason you're not the number one guy is because what? you're injured. And that's not because you you said, come okay. injure me. You didn't okay. say, oh, come injure okay. me. Okay, now, now you're, come talk, you're, you're not even making sense anymore. Mm -hmm. If I'm hurt, and John Wall and knees, Karan Butler is the number one player now. And, 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 and Antoine Jamin is the number one player. I'm hurt. I'm not playing. I cannot walk around that locker room like I'm still the shit. Why not? Because, because you're not. I'm Because not. when you get better, you're going to still be looked at as when Gilbert gets healed up, he's I, still our guy. When, he's our franchise guy. Didn't Gilbert, you get Sam the max? When, Gilbert, when you got hurt, didn't when, he still get you the max? When Gilbert gets better, he has to prove that he's still the dude but we're still giving him the pathway to the number one spot no, that, he was that's he was he gotta earn it back okay he's gotta earn it back but he's gonna get the, okay. the fucking red carpet to get it back a because he was him ask now ask ask some of those play when, when i got hurt i played two games one year i played two games one year eight games another year ask the players on their team did they pay attention to me Go ask them. If ask they, Nick Young them. If they were good teammates, they would say yes. No, because I wasn't there. 
I was, I was I was just a nigga I was just a nigga in the locker room right there. I didn't come on the road trip. Nigga, I didn't show up, nigga. Be like, hey, yeah, hey that's what, I was that nigga. nigga hey, yeah, I, was, I come I in the first. I come in. I'm not in no practices. Look, you know what type of yeah. nigga I was? I can't wait to get up and get back. I'm not in no practice. That's right. the type of nigga I am. I don't oh, yeah, know about yeah, yeah. them. I don't know about them. First of all, you ain't But me, see. I'm like, hey, man, yo, you good? How you, you feeling? Even, you ain't even I see me. I can't wait till you get back. We go yeah. kill him. How you know? You ain't even see me I don't play. care because I know you. I, you man, got your drafted. energy. Just you. Oh, yeah. uh, no. I wasn't, Just you. I wasn't practicing. I wasn't in no meetings. I mean, I ain't on no motherfucking bus. I'm on them, I'm not on them long ass road trippers unless it was Miami or LA. <laughs> That's it. Why you, you never heard me, you even you you heard me and said I failed my young boys because the Gilbert that they thought they were gonna get, the dude who worked out four or five times a day was not there. So this is what we're talking about. You talking about was you not failed, you there. failed them because we're talking about team shit right now. I failed it because I wasn't there, I wasn't present for them to even get the energy. You want them to respect the Ben Simmons when Ben Simmons is not even mentally available. Well, they're supposed to go on to, hey, Ben, hey, how you supposed to play the defense? Like, like get the fuck out of here, man. Hey, sit there in your suit and your chain, man. We, we, we got this. There's some new stars, new players moving. Sorry, that's just that's just that's just basketball, man. Nobody going. That's not basketball. Nobody gonna care about that's what you basketball. used to do. That's pickup. That's pickup. <laughs> yeah, pickup is the NBA. So Nobody cares what basketball. you used to do. That's not Draymond. Basketball. We don't care how many people you choke. Hey, hey, Kaminga's like, I don't give a fuck why you did it, you but I'm, I'm, about, I'm about to try to take your spot. Draymond, when you come back, cool. I'm gonna clap for when you do that. Amen. I'm going to clap for you for you do that, but you gave me a chance to breathe, and I'm going to... Man, they hold a double you, standard. They, they hold huh? a double standard for ain't you, Ain't no man. fucking double standard for they nothing. They hold a double uh -huh. standard He ain't been you, there. Man. He ain't been there. Well, There's a lot of ten players games ain't been there. Ten, Y'all sound crazy. And nobody respects them. Y'all sound crazy. Why didn't they get... They, hey, why you, why you think they get... Why you think they nobody move on? Nobody respect Kawhi then, right? People have been talking shit about him. I they ain't been asked about talking shit. I said respect. Been no, losing no, respect for the players. Said, Which players? On his team. The same ones that's been hurt too? Are them niggas losing respect for Carl? Go Lee? ask him. I mean, uh, uh, uh Go ask why? him. Go ask him. Ask him. You got to ask. Go ask really? him. Did, did y'all ask know, the Brooklyn Nets niggas? I know, I know, I know. Did y'all ask the Brooklyn Nets niggas? Thank you. We didn't even know who was on that team. Let's just say that. with this shit, man. Come on, man. Talking about go ask him, but y'all ain't have nobody on Brooklyn. This nigga ain't Go ask him. Go ask who? Then we, who then, we asking? Did we have somebody on Brooklyn on do TV? You? Yes, we did. Did you ask him? Did, yes. Did you? I am not going to say no. Okay. We didn't know Let's he was not, on that team you no more. Because we don't want you to cap on TV. You keep Let's saying I'm capping, cap. but I prove you wrong every time. You said I did didn't you have talk to him? You said I didn't have the draft shit, and I showed you he was only six motherfuckers. Did you talk to him? Huh? Did you talk to Did them? I show you your draft shit when you told the world I was capping on the draft? On what draft? Did I show, when you, I said I got everybody's draft shit. Did I tell you that? From what? From the draft. What? what? Height, jumping ability. Then I said I had to, and you said cap, show us. I showed you, right? Did you, did you rechange and say I wasn't Man, lying? What is you talking about? Did I show you that, you remember when I said the draft, right? Josiah. Draft. Then I say, this I got everybody. I got you every. See when I be, I start cooking I'll niggas, and then he says, "Well, let's That's talk about this you now." You ain't cook. In the middle, you ain't cook shit. In the middle of the conversation. Are you gonna you let me cook? Are you gonna let me talk about this? Now? You just called me cap, right? Come on, man. You just called me cap. I said the last talk time. About you, a whole different conversation. I said the last time you called me cap. Ain't available. Niggas don't respect you if you ain't I said, available. I said the last Point time you called me cap. You said I was capping about when I said I have everybody's draft statistics, height. Weight, wow. jumping ability, everything. And you said, Cap, show us. Obviously, I couldn't go to my phone. But did I prove to you that I did have it? Did I show you your no, draft? No. I didn't show you your draft. I didn't show you. And you said, what this? But what does that have what to do with what wait, we're oh, talking No, 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 he no. He has the receipts that he can prove what he's saying. I know what Gilbert's he's saying. basically saying he's a connected man. That, that so, I'm just trolling him right now, man. He just oh, wait, no, no, no. Don't troll me. No, no. Don't troll me. Don't troll me. What is this? What, what does this say right here? Is this, this is, what, what, what year you got drafted, McCants? How what, what year? Is that, that's Rashad McCants? That is Rashad McCants. Uh huh, it was 6'2.7, with shoes, 100, 207 pounds, wingspan, 10 and a half. Is that that man right there? Huh? Yeah, I'm that's here to host. I'm merely here to host and spread holiday uh, who, else, who else was in your draft, huh? David Lee, that's, he got drafted with you? John Lucas? So you pulled up. Jason Maxell? That's of the baby eater. That's all I am? 
No, this is draft. I told you, I get every single draft combine results. So you go to draft, and I told, I said, hey, Brandon Jennings, you didn't go. He said, no, because I didn't see him in his what's the name. Remember when I was saying how many people from the 80s and 90s had, uh, remember this is a conversation, how many of the guards had 40-inch verticals back then? Remember, that's where it started from. I know. Yeah, yeah. And on that note, I feel like that's a great place for us to go ahead and get ready to celebrate these holiday cheers. And Chris Paul, only 5'11". <laughs> yeah, that, that man, that's the information we need to share about that man. My bad. Let Chris Paul breathe. Let him be six feet. That's why I said that Two inches. She was saying that it, it uh, Shoes. measurements give you two inches. Yeah. And that's when I was saying cap. That's what I was saying cap on. You got to know how to say two inches. Because you were saying that you, um, you were a certain height, but it gives you two inches. And I was like, no, that's cap. No, no, you said I was capping because you, when I was like uh, 40, when I was saying the guards back then, the ones and the twos didn't have 40 inch verticals to even guard Michael Jordan. But that, that, that particular text came from the two, that's why I said two, I was like, two inches? You was like, yeah. what? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. You so, talking about the two, the two inches? Um, shoot, yeah, shoot shoes that's and shoot outs. So that is our show for today, and everybody out there, we're going on a little break to rejuvenate, uh, but Gills Arena Live shows will be back starting with our special New Year's Eve episode on December 31st, starting at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. In the meantime, we wish y'all all a happy holiday season. And it's going to be King Martin's birthday after the birthday. We turn it up. <laughs> we appreciate y'all rocking with us on Gills Arena, presented by Underdog Fantasy. Whoa, whoa. Make sure y'all pull up New Year's Eve, and we will see y'all then. Fuckers. Oh, yeah.